Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Midnight's Edge After Dark special. We're here to talk about Ghostbusters Afterlife. We have six with us. How are you doing? I am doing wonderfully. I had a wonderful, wonderful day. You must have had some curly fries. Uh, we also have with us <laughs> the price of reason. Hey, what's up? We're going to talk about Ghostbusters. We also have clobbering times. Hey there. Good to see you, my friends in the chat and wonderful friends on the panel. Greetings. And flying in here like a sewer dragon, we have Culture Casino. How you doing? <laughs> yes, I feel very sewer dragony, if that's a word. <laughs> but yeah, yes, yeah. yeah, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm, happy. I'm happy. Yeah, you're all gooey like one. <laughs> That's what Share out said. the link and let everybody know that we are live. We are going to talk non-spoilers to begin with, but then we will uh, probably dip into spoilers as we get into the program. Mm. Um, but yeah, for those who are curious, we're not going to probably talk much about anything else, although. We're not going to talk about while, trailers? I was just going to say, while people are filing in here, I suppose we can react to the Beetlejuice trailer at least. Um, I didn't see that one. House of Dragons season two, maybe to also. I didn't see a Beetlejuice trailer. Hmm. If I, I don't care about the. I didn't Game see of a House Thrones of Dragons trailer. Be Beetlegeist, Beetlegeist, Beetlegeist. My only hmm. issue with Beetlejuice was a Michael Keaton looks way too old to be playing Beetlejuice. They should have done something to his face, and B, it's you can tell it's shot digitally, so something just feels off. Even though you're they're doing practical effects, just something still feels off about it. Maybe it's just me, but everybody else seems to be excited for it but uh, what do you what did you think six well i wouldn't say i'm excited for it because obviously it's not gonna it's gonna be a huge disappointment i'm a huge fan of the first beetlejuice movie so um but it was i love winona Ryder. she was uh my ride or die back in the i don't know 80s or 90s i fucking loved her so it's really cool to see her back in a role that i used to adore her in um I thought Michael Keaton looked looked pretty good. There was in the theater there was about seven women who most of which were slightly older than me looking. And they said after the trailer, was that Michael Keaton? No, that's not Michael Keaton. And mm. I thought, oh my god, it's so funny when like I spend so much time in this community and then I go out and I'm amongst normies. <laughs> it's it's just such a stark contrast. But uh, <laughs> I think it. Uh, I'll go see it in the theater, but I'm not gonna. It's not. It's not gonna be great. Whoa. Yeah. Agreed, bro. You Worth know, I want to give it a shot, though. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm with you, Clobby. I'm with you. I have a question for you, Six. So, did you go through a shoplifting phase too? <laughs> I've forgiven her for that. <laughs> um, I uh, did. I ever shoplift when I was like four or five. I took uh, something from the counter at the hair salon where my mom got her hair done. Oh. And my mom made me, we all had to go back um, and I had to return it. I thought it was like a basket of like free, you know, like how you go to a restaurant. And there's like a yeah. free thing of mints. Um, I, I genuinely <laughs> thought it was free. Sure. So I was, I mean, I was a child. Uh huh. No, I, I, don't, actually, I, I don't think that counts if you're a kid. But I, I forgive, <laughs> I forgive Winona Ryder. I'll pay her. I actually half ass believe her. <laughs> I know that's kind of weird to say, but I do. I kind of half ass believe, considering the world she lived in for so long, that she was used to just being able to walk in, get what she's going to get, and they would just bill her later. But she right? said she was doing it because she was uh, getting ready for a role. For a role a yeah. yeah, she was going nuts. But. <laughs> Like that, or that's what they told her to say. At least she looked good during those times. I think she looks good now. I, I mean, she it. looks good. You now also got to remember yes. where she was at in her career at that point, too. Where was she? She was a little bit on the down, downward slope. Yeah. Oh. So I'm, I'm thinking she was having a little bit of a mental issue crisis kind of thing of moment. And I, I don't, I'm not giving her excuses. I'm just saying, I don't think she was all, all of her faculties were there. Like, I literally don't think she realized what she was doing i forgive her i i don't that's what i'm saying it's not even a fact of forgiving her i really don't think she honestly thought she was doing something wrong at that no point. no i've always liked her you know what i mean I, she she made a good uh argument and i thought to myself you know she's all right i i okay. liked her then and i like her now 
okay, this went on way longer than it needed to for a little joke. At <laughs> it did, it did, it did. Man, I, people are gonna think I'm like a bad guy. I'm like, no, it was a You're joke. You're a huge bad guy jerk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Villain. That's true. Well, I think. Okay, this is the last thing I'm gonna say. I think that when you have a lot of money and you aren't working steadily, like we all, most of us have regular jobs, sort of, or at least I do. Uh, you get bored. And maybe there's an adrenaline rush behind stealing. So maybe she was looking for a little excitement. That could be too. That, I'm not going to rule that out either. But, yeah. Uh, it's one. This is my, bridge. like, yeah, to me, it just, yeah, he just looks a, a tad. They could have fudged a lot of that out. Yeah. They could have gotten rid of those wrinkles on his forehead easily. Yeah. But I don't care. But otherwise, I mean, the voice sounds fine. All that kind of business I'm cool with, but. Whatever. Maybe, I didn't even maybe, get it in the theater, so maybe there'll be I, something I in, in the movie that explains his aging. They mm. better. They probably won't. No. I hope we'll just go along with it. I think they will. They're hoping that we're just going to do that. I, um, I look to me. You're getting Michael Keaton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know that's kind of a win. You know, you get a Winona Ryder. You get a Jenna Ortega. A win. No, no Ryder. <laughs> 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 anyway, <laughs> who do you think the funeral is going to be for in the beginning? Jeffrey Jones or Winona Ryder's yeah. husband? Uh, yeah. Jeffrey Jones. Catherine O'Hara's husband. I yeah. I think he's going to be long dead. I paused it on the headstone. It looks like a black person, so I'm not sure who the character is. There's a picture oh. of him on the headstone. There's a picture on the headstone. Oh, and it's very hard to see because it's kind of behind flowers, but it looks like a black person. So I'm not sure it's either. That's, That's my point. Tongue. Or it could be somebody of yeah, darker skin. Maybe it's Hispanic. Maybe it is Winona Ryder's Winona's husband. husband being, that, yeah. being that Jenna is, and that would make sense as to why maybe they're coming back to live They're with coming the back home back. to the haunt house, yeah. and that's where they encounter Beetlejuice again or whatever. Yeah. Is, but is Jeffrey Jones any shot he's in it at all or no? No, he's not supposed to be in it at all. Um, Isn't he And dead? obviously... Did he die last? Like he, yeah, oh. I think he did. Pet. No, he's still alive. He I can't remember. I so. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. I can't even remember anymore. But I know for sure that fuck you. That's my name is not going to be in it. <laughs> 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 and uh, I'm sure uh, crazy ass Gina Davis ain't going to be in it either. <laughs> no, yeah, Gina's yeah. not going to be in it. I don't think. And Alec yeah. is definitely not. Yeah. Well, and Jeff uh, Jeffrey Jones is still alive. He's 77. Okay, well, he was in a lot he of had, trouble for he, a while. He had, yeah, he had some issues. <laughs> he had some issues. Let's say we're gonna leave it at that. Um, because we got we got to talk about a movie, and I think uh, the majority of the people that are gonna be here are showing up because uh, we're gonna start out non spoilers, guys. So keep that in mind. Um, oh shit! Okay. Just at first, like a, a, a just a brief over, like how you felt about it, kind of thing. Uh, without any spoilers, uh, but the basics for those who are sticking around until the spoiler part. Um, let me get a non-spoiler banner up, maybe. Here we go. Thank you, Six. Uh, I was just about there. Uh, the basic outline is pretty much in the trailer, right? Like, it's not that difficult to figure out. Um, it's a couple years after the last film. Uh, the Spengler family has taken over Ghostbuster headquarters. Ghosts are alive and well in New York. <laughs> Honey, I know. And uh, they're out just doing their thing. And, uh, of course, a new powerful entity shows up and they've got to band together and face it down. That's the the non-spoiler version breakdown of the story. So let's start with six, because I know you actually enjoyed the film quite a bit. Or actually, before I do that, I I will. Did I tell you that? that? I thought you said you did. Uh, 32 flavors of Nick Weiser. Uh, I mean, let me get these super chats first before, just in case anybody wants to leave. So I don't know if Nick wants to hear any of this or not. Why is it Nick here? He's in Texas. He's, all, he's on the road. Yeah. Don't they have movie uh, theaters there? I, I think they're <laughs> planning on it, but I don't think they're able to go see it until this weekend or something like that. Okay. But, uh, Nick is here and he sends in 10 bucks. Holy cow. Thank you, Nick. You almost paid for the, uh, ticket and the child seat that I got that my buddy sat in. He was so worried. <laughs> Uh, my best, my best friend from forever. But he wouldn't me. fit in the child seat. Yeah, no, he's like they're gonna not gonna let me in, dude. I'm like they're not even gonna look at the fucking tickets. They don't give a shit. <laughs> they didn't give a shit, and I'm like, like I told you they weren't gonna care. And I'm like, even <laughs> if they say anything, I'll give them the extra buck. 
Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I just got it as a second seat because I didn't want anybody sitting next to me. And he just decided he wanted to go. So I was like, all right, I got an extra ticket. Anyway, it didn't matter because nobody sat next to me on either side. And then his buddies came with us, too. So there was like four of us there. And there was like six more people all together in the theater. But anyway, it says, make sure you give Tom and the panelists a huge thumbs up. That's right. Hope you all enjoyed Ghostbusters Hail from Texas. Well, we're about to get into that. Truth, Hope, Love, send in 10. and said, wouldn't make sense for Baldwin and Davis to come back anyways because their characters are ghosts. And they wouldn't make sense for ghosts to age that, too. Exactly. Around, possibly, but. They're going to have to come up with an excuse how they crossed over or whatever to the other side. But anyway, that being said, speaking of crossing over and crossing things, uh, let's uh, get with Six's initial reaction. First of all, did you like the last film? And then what did you think briefly about this one without getting into spoilers? I really enjoyed the last film uh, very much. I, I think I cried three times during it, that that relationship, the daughter and and her dad, uh, Harold Ramis, his character, um, that really touched me. And I thought that they really wrapped it up at the end with uh, bringing him back as a ghost. That 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 was pretty cool. Um, so I, I am, and I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan. The first movie is a perfect movie, in my opinion. I mean, it's not Star Wars, but it's as close to perfect as you can get. So... Um, I was very thrilled to see uh, Afterlife in the theater and I was kind of not looking forward so much to this one because I'd seen a lot of reviews that said um, some negative stuff about it. So I wasn't, I, I walked out, I sat through that whole movie with a smile on my face. I was, I was very happy. I was thrilled when I left, even though I thought, oh, Tom's going to hate it. And I, I did message him and I said, oh, this is going to be another Thor because I was the only one who liked Thor, Love and Thunder. No, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. This, doesn't, I, this movie does not make any of those sins, but without getting too deep into that. But yeah. Yeah. But overall, I loved it. All right. Well, there's one. Love it. Uh, so Price, what did you think of the last one? And then what did you think of this one? Well, I thought that the Afterlife one, uh, it wasn't a perfect movie, but I felt that it had heart. And I liked the way uh, it treated the original characters and sort of respected the lore and all that. Uh, I wasn't extremely concerned going into this one because the type of reviewers that were saying, oh, it's too much nostalgia bait or whatever, those were the type of reviewers that loved to... uh, Ghostbusters 2016, a lot of these kind of weird shows. So I didn't really, I took all of that with a grain of salt. But I will say that I like this movie less than Afterlife. And I feel that Afterlife told a more uh, cohesive story that really, uh, you know, had a, a heart at its center. And I feel like this one had some good ideas in it. And I didn't hate it. I didn't, I don't hate the movie, but I just feel like. It had a lot of interesting pieces of a puzzle to work with. And somehow when you connect them all together, it didn't fully deliver on what I think it could have been. Fair enough. All right. Clobby. Um, you know, uh, to kind of bounce off what six was saying, the the original. Yeah. Yeah. You hear me? You don't hear me? I hear him. Do you not hear him six? I don't hear him. Oh, Um, he's there. Fuck, I'm gonna oh, reboot. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you're gonna have to reboot. Yeah, sorry about that. That's all right. So yeah, Claudia, what'd you think of Afterlife? And then what'd you think of this one briefly? Um, to sort of bounce off of what Six was saying, uh, the original film means the world to me. It's one of my top ten all-time favorite films. It's a perfect movie. I've watched it. I mean, the theater in 1984, it must have went up well over 10, 12 more more times to see it. I was obsessed with it, I always have loved it. Everything after that, obviously a bit less so. Two's okay. Uh, we won't speak of the other one, but uh, Afterlife, there were some decisions made in that film that really kind of gnaw at me because I did enjoy it on the whole. I don't like what, what they, I don't like dredging up Gozer. I don't like what the whole um, Egon and Ray being estranged for all that time, any of that kind of stuff. Then, uh, however, the last 20 some minutes, uh, this, if you if you love the original film, it just takes your heart and you just don't, you almost don't care if some of the transgressions that I believe that they did make the mistakes that they made. Uh, in narrative wise, story wise, so uh, I that last twenty minutes of that the heart and that and I guess look it's to, it was totally manipulative, but it really got to me the last twenty minutes or so of Afterlife. So I, I, on the whole, I've only seen it the one time in the theater. I enjoyed it a lot. I'll watch it again at some point probably. 
And this one's I'm on the plot, kind of clo close to the same level, maybe not quite as much because that 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 last uh, again that, that ending of that last one's just so tough to top, uh, just in terms of emotional emotions. But I found this to be, you know, a decent adventure with these characters. Um, it was okay. Uh, not something I would probably watch over and over again or anything like that, but just to give you know, just to be not to go any details. Um, it's pretty enjoyable. There's some nice scenes here and there. It's mildly entertaining. Uh, and so I thought it was just a kind of a, a, a decent film. And we'll be okay. able to expand on that. Yeah. Yes. So that's pretty much all I got. All right. And uh, last but not least, culture. What do you think of Afterlife? And then what do you think of this one briefly? Uh, well, um, Afterlife was a very good film. Uh, as I said back then when I did the review on it, um, it does, you know, tug at your heart and strings, as Clobby said, uh, and as Six said, um, you know, 84 was one of the top, you know, 30 to 50 movies that I've seen in my life. Uh, I hold it very close to my heart. 1984 was a big year for films, and, and this was uh, the original Ghostbusters was one of them. But compared to um, Afterlife, this one does fall short. Uh, it, it Not by a long uh, a long length, but it does fall short. And I enjoyed, I enjoyed it mostly. There is uh, quite a bit of fan service in here. Um, there uh, are some parts of the film that would have been very easy to edit out. And uh, outside of that, you know, minor pacing and things like that, eh, it, 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 it is worth seeing. Now, did, 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 do you want my rating now or no? Because, I mean... You can. I mean, that's non-spoiler, so go for it if you want to. I feel like I feel like this is be and, uh, this is a better-than-average film, uh, which is saying a lot for movies in the last uh, six years. And it's worth uh, a family to go and see. Uh, you might want to judge the age of the family appropriately. There are some interesting things that are happening here there's some weird energy that i that i will be talking about in my review on the film um but i honestly thought that they leaned just a little too heavily into the key to everything which we'll talk about later um but this is a seven of ten film for me uh it's a good family excursion over the age of 12 maybe 10 I'm not sure what you mean by the key to everything, so I'll have to ask you about that when we get to spoilers. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I'm like, I'm missing that point, I guess, unless we're thinking of the same character now. But maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But uh, I don't know. all right, so yeah, one? like, nah, maybe, maybe no, nah, that's not the one I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of uh, Phoebe. No, it's a non-female. Actually, that's the weird thing. That's why I'm asking him what he means. Let's wait for her spoilers. Yeah. So anyway, uh, my reaction. I, I, for those who don't know, I actually liked afterlife a lot more than I expected to I saw it in the theaters a couple times I've seen it about two or three times since and it's one of those movies that I feel like gets better every time I watch it in fact some of the problems I have had with it in the past kind of clear up a little more the more I see it uh, if anything it just feels rather rushed in that last quarter of the film and that might be this film's biggest problem at the end of the day but we'll get into that into spoilers uh, overall though I I I am of two minds on this movie, right? Cause I understand. And I agree with everything. Every one of you are saying that's the problem. <laughs> like as a, okay. So I think people are going to have two different reactions to this. The hardcore ghostbuster fans are going to fucking love it. They're going to love it. They're going to see all the Easter eggs, uh, without saying getting into spoiler. I can say this much. I think it does feel like an episode of the animated series though. Now that. I think is going to be where it wobbles with some fans. Some fans will eat that up. Some fans will not be as happy with that. Uh, then there's going to be the normies. The normies, I think, are where they're going to fall into the categories of where they may feel like it's just too inside baseball for some of them. Uh, and some of the normies are probably going to be just fine with it. Uh, at the end of the day, I agree with you, culture, when you said it best. It is above average, right? Like, I... It is not anywhere near a middle of the road kind of movie like we've gotten out of some of the MCU and DC and stuff like that lately. Like I just watched like Aquaman this last weekend. This is leaps and bounds better than that, right? Like much more entertaining. Like Six said, I had a smile on my face through most of the movie. I laughed at almost all the jokes. Some of them fell off, you know, fell a little flat. Um, that's the one thing I'd say. If anything, it's a little lighter on the humor. 
than it is uh, than the past films were. But uh, no, we'll get into that into spoilers. But I, I, I hate to put a number on it yet because I almost do want to see it again. Because uh, there's some things that I want, like with the first film, or not the first one, but the last film, I should say, that kind of just don't quite sit well with me. But I'm just trying to see if it's like something I missed or whatever. Because I had the same issue with Afterlife. And then as soon as I saw it a couple more times, that uh, had a little bit more less issues with it. So I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see how this goes. I, I'm kind of with you guys. I feel like it's not quite as good as Afterlife. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of the Ghostbuster fans are going to be happy. Um, so we'll have to see with that, but with that, we're going to break into some spoilers here in just a moment. So warning on that, we got Jason Webster in the house who sent in Australian five dull redos says the reviews have been mixed for Ghostbusters frozen empire. Yeah. And I'm going to, I can see why I can see why. Um, cause I'll tell you my buddy, like I said, who's just as much or bigger Ghostbuster fan than I am. He loved it. He flat out loved it. Um, the other guy that was dressed as a ghostbuster in the theater, he clearly loved it. What? Uh, I, yeah. Really? Yeah. Did you get a picture? I, no, I should have though. I should have asked him if I could get a picture. Cause he was all in full regalia and everything. He didn't have the backpack, but that's awesome. Yeah, he was, yeah my buddy goes, at least you had him here to keep us safe. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody no, get any of the popcorn buckets? No, that's another thing that pissed me off. They had no pins, no popcorn no, buckets, nothing, nothing in my theater. I was Mark so D, mad. Mark D with the C got the, uh, the, the the trap bucket. Yeah, yeah, they had nothing at my place. But anyway, and this you is should have messaged me. Spoilers. I could have gotten you one. They had everything. I wish I'd have known. Um, my buddy's supposed to check the AMC over by him, but uh, um, but that was kind of I guess where we can get into spoilers here because that's one thing I did say is I said, well, at least you showed up, and Rick Moranis didn't have the decency to do that. Uh, oh, so, I yeah. forgot about, yeah, I was hoping. I was upset. I was upset because I know he lives in New York now, and I know he's been holding out to do this stupid Honey, I Shrunk the Kids reboot. It's like, yeah. why didn't you just at least be in this, dude? Because mm -hmm. there's been, there was plenty of places where he could have been in. And I even thought of one that would have been ingenious to have him come in and almost been hilarious, considering spoiler number two. Walter Peck is now the mayor of the city, but we all kind of knew that from right. the trailers. Yeah, we saw that in the, the trailer. Yeah, well, what would have been a hilarious is if at the end, if Rick Moranis came in and he's the fucking governor of the state. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been amazing. Right. He would have been like, okay, Dickless, you need to leave my friends alone, okay? <laughs> I'm the goddamn governor. You're not. <laughs> You know, and they just had because the governor would be a moron. Of course he would be. Of course. <laughs> I thought that would have been a perfect place for him. But anyway, that being said, all other spoilers aside or other other bullshit aside, let's get into spoilers now. So where should we start with this? Let's. Yeah, clearly there's no Rick Moranis, no Sigourney Weaver, which is not a big deal, I guess. Um, I will say I felt like I mean, up front, I guess let's go with some positives here. I felt like the older Ghostbusters were utilized much better in this film than they were the last film to where they felt kind of like an afterthought at the end there, even though if you pay more attention to the movie, you can see where Ray clearly went from the phone call to getting the guys and coming, right? It wasn't like, it feels like there's more of a gap in the movie than there actually is. Um, to where in this film, they feel like they're more naturally there. The other thing I did like, and I think some people who had some issues with the last film will appreciate is they do actually address kids ghost busting. In fact, it's a major point of the film. Uh, cause because Peck basically tells them yeah. that they can't be having minors busting yeah, but, ghosts. But a question, Tom, um, I don't know how many years passed between the past the two films, but I mean, they say they she's say 15, three. They say she's 15 in this. And we said, was she 12 in the first movie? She was 12 in the last one. Yes. Well, it didn't seem like it. Uh, okay. Well, that's the weird thing is the first one was shot in 2019, didn't come out till 2021. So they reconfigured right. everything in the film for 2021. Okay. Which is weird because there's almost as much of a gap between the first one of these and this one than there, that there was between Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2. Okay. Isn't that uh, weird? There's like four years yeah. between shooting of these films as opposed to the five years there was between those. But it's like really weird because they actually say it's only three years, but it's really more like four. And here so yeah, you have Stevie's children. Like, you have yeah. children. It's really noticeable that they're older. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, they dress yeah. it, right? Like, I mean, I, clearly, like, because the one kid, he was 15 in the last one. And now he's 18 and she was right. 12 in the last. And I just watched it the night before. So I, yeah, they do address their age. Cause okay. uh, what's her face. Lucky 
makes fun of uh finn wolfhard's character because he's like i'll be 15 or i'll be 16 in february she's like it's june <laughs> and then she, phoebe once says something about being 12 yeah yeah she's only 17 in real life so i guess it makes sense it just, looks- yeah and that's what i'm saying they clearly have aged up because they've aged up that long anyway yeah. so they just happened to work out because they shot this last year but yeah mm. so there's that and i do like that they actually address that right because that's something i know a lot of people had a point of contention with in the last film because they do treat you know the, the the proton packs and the stuff like that as serious like she even says it herself, it's kind of like a weapon, right? <laughs> like, the fight goes. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not a toy, in other words. And I mean, the gearheads are gonna love this shit. Um, as far as the bad guy goes, I think they'll be happy. Like with you, Clobby, before the show, we were talking a little bit. One of my biggest gripes with the last film was that they had to dive back into Gozer. Yeah, the Gozer coming back was that just. To that me, was, I like uh, that we had a different bad guy, completely new out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, I didn't new... love the bad guy. He kind of reminded me of a. I didn't love it, but I'm Harry glad. That, but yeah, I'm glad that it was something yeah. different. That's my point. Sorry, right? There's nothing really to him, but it just uh, don't rehash Gozer like they did. I would have yeah. preferred them not do that. Or Vigo, yeah. or something like you know what I mean. Yeah. Like if they went back to yeah. Vigo again, I'd be like, oh, oh shit. god, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> he was Vigo ish. Kind of, but not. Not exactly, but sort yeah. of. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. That he had no personality whatsoever. They didn't even spend any time with him. You know. But okay, so for negatives, though, like you guys are right. It, they're trying to cram way too much into two hours here. And that might yeah. be, honestly, like Lucky is a character that should have been left out. Podcast almost feels like he's an afterthought in this movie most of the time. You introduce this other new character that's on the, the British dude. And, right. and a couple yeah. other he new was, characters. He was superfluous. They just needed another body there to like have somebody else understand tech. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. I, yeah. and yeah. I wonder, and here's the other thing that I was kind of wondering about, because in the trailers, we get a lot of scenes and bits that are not in this movie. Mm. And I wonder if they didn't reduce Pat and Oswald quite a bit, too. They did, because I was like, even though this is still too much Pat and Oswald, yeah. this, is as much, this is as much Pat and Oswald as you He has you one need. scene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that you, that you, thank you, God. There, there, exactly. There's one. There he. There is just enough Pat Oswalt for you to not be completely turned off of this movie. Yes, I didn't. Yeah, hate and it wasn't not... very Pat Oswalt either. It like uh, if he's... if another actor had read those same lines in the exact same way, I would not have thought of Pat Oswalt. Right. I yeah. Honestly, read them like true. the kind of person that he usually plays. Yeah. To be honest, that's one one of the things that kind of bothered me because Ray should have known that shit. Right. right. Yeah. Good point. So Ray should have known that shit. Ray should have been at least, if not known, to be the one to know where to look there, and find there it wasn't, out. Yeah, and and again, if you structured this movie differently, there you would have ended up with with people um, appreciating uh, Ray more. But I mean, it's you have the knowledge. Well, we went along with his, and that's one thing I did love about the movie. Okay, it's not to interrupt you, culture. I'm very sorry, but I want to point this fine. out. That's they had with Ray that was he was my favorite character of the movie because he is us. He's like, I don't want to retire. I want to be a yeah. fucking Ghostbuster, yeah. right? Like, that's what I loved is his, and that I think would have helped his character in the film. That's all I wanted to say there. Instead of having, dragging Pat and Oswald in for no good fucking reason whatsoever. Uh, although, they- oh, sorry, go on. No, go ahead, Price. I was going to say that although from the OG actors, the person that actually impressed me the most was uh, Ernie Hudson. I feel like he looks uh, 20 years younger than he is. But not only that, his whole energy and vibe was a lot more youthful. He's and and he, yeah. he, he brought, so like, every scene he's in, he's just so enthusiastic. There's so much energy there. Uh, I really was impressed by him. I think that maybe in the past he didn't get his uh, proper due or whatever you want to call it. But I think in this movie he really stands out. Oh, he gets the most screen time yeah. besides Ray, yeah. I'm... Um- Patton Oswald, I'm hoping that they didn't bring him in in case Dan Aykroyd dies and that's what I'm afraid of. They they bring in these other characters or keep these these other characters from afterlife going so that when they make the third one, they have people to jump off to. But yeah, I agree. Um that uh oh my god, you just said his name. What's his name? Ernie Hudson. Patton Patton Oswald or Ernie Hudson. Hudson. Yeah, he was amazing in it. And yeah, he, he looks so young. And the, the my favorite thing that this movie gave us that was kind of a, a twist of the knife in my gut was we got a shot of Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, um, Ernie Hudson, and then Annie Potts in 
for the Egon mm. character. We got that shot, which we didn't get from Star Wars. You know, we didn't get right. oh, yeah, yeah, and Leia yeah. together, but we got, you know, the old school characters from the this, it, Ghostbusters it was, together. And it was the second time they managed to pull that off. And that's something that, you know, will be mentioned in my review. But back to what I was saying. Um, Sorry, the culture. Yeah. No, it's okay. The, uh, there was too much movie. This did yeah. not need to be two yeah. hours long. And what you do is you cut out the the un, the un, the uninspiring Patton Oswald, because as Six mentioned, you could have put any actor in that thing, which means the scene is is superfluous. It's not unneeded. Same thing with um, you know, this the the random British dude, right? You know, you 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 approach the story differently, um, you know, and not make a mystery box out of the fact that they've been working on an engineering area. You know, and they were still shipping them out with a broken down car and broken down old packs and everything else when they had all this new tech. None of that made sense. So what you do is you you still retain home base as the firehouse because that is the central thing in this film. People will realize that when they I see didn't it. have as much of a problem with that. But you 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 created a bunch of unneeded characters when other people already should. Well, yeah, like my well. issue wasn't so much the new characters as it was the older ones that were returning that just kind of were shoved in because they had to be there. Like seriously, podcast and Lucky did not need to be there. Right, and neither did. They're, and they're, they're almost there or... out of. That's one of my complaints is they're almost brought in in a way that's like convoluted because Lucky is just fucking there, right? They don't even really give you a good explanation. She's just interning. And yeah. then podcast, he actually comes with a convoluted reason to be in New York. Space so camp. he can, yeah. So yeah, and it's like to me, it's like you should have just cut those two characters out. You didn't need them. That's what I said. I think they're going to be there for another movie. They well, wouldn't. But be, you, they should have just saved them for later. Sorry, and I ahead, like them. Well, I you, do too. You, I love podcast. But anyway, but go ahead, culture. They yeah. were there to check boxes. You're not wrong, but so was Najini, Yami, Yami, whatever. And I didn't okay. hate him in this movie. I did. I didn't he's, fucking he's, hate him. He, I did. He was fucking worthless. Dude Dude added nothing to the character, added nothing. Uh, there are so many other people that could have done something with that role. Um, I mean, seriously. You're not wrong, I suppose. But like, yeah, dude, my issue was is he could have been way, more annoying, I guess. I don't know. No, I, <laughs> but you could have put Brad Pitt in that role. You could have put anybody in that role. And that they, you put that guy in there. I don't care what anybody says. He is he's he's a dump truck of an actor. He's terrible. Well, but. he was everybody knows how much I love the prequels, but he was the Jar Jar of the movie. Yes. <laughs> just stumble into being You're an important wrong. part of the plot. Nah. Sorry, Tom. Nah, I didn't but hate I liked him. him. I, I really a, liked him. I he liked great on me. Him. Yeah, he didn't grade on me. That's the thing, is he could have been better. I'm not gonna lie. But here's the thing is the plot. Like to get deeper into the plot, like this is where I had my issue too. Is with that the, look, if you're a fan of the series, you're gonna love it, but if you're not the, as big of a fan of the series, then you're not gonna be so much. And don't expect to see all the guys in the red regalia either, because we only see Lucky, I think, in the outfit in the actual movie. That's why I feel like a good chunk of this movie got left on the cutting room floor. Okay, but wait a um, second, Tom. What does that mean? If you're a fan of Ghostbusters, you're gonna like this movie. If you're not a fan of Ghostbusters, you're not gonna like this movie. The series. So the mean, series has a animated. different tone. Oh, you mean the t the animated? It, yes. Animated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This okay. is basically an elongated animated series, basically. That's what it felt like to me, for better or worse. I love that's, certain that's aspects so, of it. Yeah. yeah. And other aspects I wasn't too big on. Like the the whole the whole main plot though revolves around the orb being brought in, they accidentally open it up, and of course, well, the fuck, it, that, that was very purposely opened up. Yeah, well, sort of, kind of, but yeah, like partially. At first, it wasn't, and then they got a hold of the. See, that's where the movie gets a little more convoluted, and I think they could have streamlined it a bit more. It was opened yeah. up by the two least important characters in the movie. Yeah, because then you have, and then you get introduced to a ghost character, which I know some right. people are going to have some big issues with. Although to me, it felt like a character that would be in the series. It felt like something pulled right out of the series. The whole storyline mm -hmm. did because the, the build up to the whole thing is we, we, we got to go back a little bit. I'm sorry. Cause in the first bit, Phoebe is told she can't be a ghostbuster anymore. Cause she's underage. Right. And she takes that really hard. And through that story, you have actually one of the better storylines I felt in the film. She's and the key to, me, to everything. Ah, she's not the key to everything. Oh, really? Dude. Wait, yeah. How is she the key to everything? How, 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 your melody. Melody or Phoebe? 
bo- the two of them. And by the way, there was some very weird energy there that I think. Probably oh, I knew you were going to go here. <laughs> I said uh, I said that too, and Tom stop told me it, that. you guys. That is such a fucking shipper thing to do. There is nothing I, here. That- I'm telling they you right so now. They were so gay for each other, Tom. Yeah, they were. They were pretty obvious, dude. Whatever. I, I mean, no. the thing is, no, I'll give Tom one thing. It's ambiguous. They didn't flat yeah. out say it, and it's left up for interpretation. But there's okay, a, did you see the lean? Did you see the lean in price? Yes, I did. It clearly was cut out of the scene. The, the, there was the part where she says there. boo? Yeah. That, yeah. that kind of felt. And there's another yeah. thing when she says, oh, none of it was real. So this usually, in, when you have a, a a romance movie where somebody deceived another person and then they're upset, they say, "Well, none of it, none of it was real." Usually, that that's the kind of language. So when I heard her say, "None of it was real," it kind of felt like they were implying that there was some feelings there. But I yeah, was any, that, was was any of it real? I think is what the line was. was. Any of it real? Which yeah. is really that kind of rhetoric. But I will yeah. say they never You're flat right. out specifically. 100% say it. It's left up for interpretation, but it sure feels that way to me. When as Phoebe's ambiguous spirit, as it is. When Phoebe's spirit leaves her body and she walks up to Melody, there's about six inches between the two of them. And oh, I thought yeah, for was... sure that they were going to kiss. Yes, and they, I thought and, so and I'm telling you right now, there is a cut of this movie or at least scene shot where they've had more than one smooch. I'm telling you right now. there is. I don't even see how ghosts could kiss. You guys are re- you guys are doing exactly what they do right hey, now. You're doing you exactly hey, hey, Tom, you're Tom, doing Tom. exactly what all the fucking gay shippers Tom. do. Tom, how did the ghost <laughs> hold on to the matchbook? How did the ghost play chess? Yes. They say they're on two different planes though. They don't work in the same and then way. All of a sudden, and the, then di- all the of a sudden thing that you're overlooking though here is that she is there because the bad guy needs her to find a human. So she needs to befriend a human. That's her whole fucking job. The problem is that she ends up actually liking Phoebe. That, that a, but they're friends. That's they're both so they're both underage kids. First of all, that's the other thing you guys are I not even taking you. into consideration here. I have never weirder. looked at a female friend the way that Phoebe looked at Melody. I'm going. I agree with mm. six. I agree with six. It was they didn't yeah. flat out say it. That's the thing that I'll give Tom. They didn't flat out say it, but it sure felt like you guys are really effect. feeding into it. That's the fucking problem here. It's it not a very CW Our feel fault. to it. The whole character. Her existence and that type of vibe had a very CW feel to it. And m- maybe mm. the part that I liked the least about the movie was that element. Mm. Here's the problem. You guys are doing exactly what they do. They can't just be fucking friends, right? Like, I, that's the problem. I'm not doing it. It was, I it was you all see what I see. Yeah, but that's the, my problem. Is I'm not saying that you can't necessarily be jumping at shadows just because we're so used to it. But there's nothing there. It is not there. You're jumping in fucking shadows here and you're feeding in and doing exactly what they do on the other side. Unless they come out and flat out say it, then I'll be right with you guys and I'll be like, fuck them. But at this it's point, just, why can't they just be fucking friends? Because Phoebe doesn't really have any friends. Because right? of the body she, language. Okay. okay. Hang oh on my a minute. God. Hang okay. On a minute. okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me take a poll of the people on this panel, Tom. Just let this play out. Clobby, did it look like there was some weird energy going on between the ladies? All I'll say is it did enter my mind. I don't know. I, you know, it may, I believe Tom okay. could be right, and that we could be thinking about it. Just but it did enter it, your mind because of no. modern day. But I will admit it certainly did. Okay, thank you, Price. You're on board with the weird female energy getting together, yes, right? Yes, I thought to myself that they <laughs> intentionally left it ambiguous, but I couldn't ignore a few of those uh, cues there that seemed to really suggest that that was the case. Okay, fair enough. Six. And it, by the way, it's not even a criticism on my part. I'm just saying that. No, that in my no, mind. And me either. Right. And like I said, there was some intentional decision making. Sorry, six, six, where, are you, the fir- where, the first, where are you at? The first scene of Phoebe and, and Melody, they're playing chess. And I think the second scene is Melody is hovering outside Phoebe's house and she wants to come in. And the awkwardness with which Phoebe responded to no, Melody. No, the second scene is where she's going to bust her. The, the awkwardness with which Phoebe responded to Melody being around was like she was around a boy that she was attracted like how I would respond at that age, being around a boy that I was attracted to. And might I remind you that she was awkward and nervous. I always, I always got, I always got invited in the house, by the way. Uh, So, so I'm just going to count myself as four people who thought there was some very weird energy going on there. And Tom, these are four independent beings below you. 
that saw the film not in your presence that all came to roughly the same conclusion. So we're imagining things. Yeah, you are imagining things because it's not here. They don't kiss. They don't mention any kind of relationship. At no point does Phoebe say, I like women. It doesn't even come up once. It's all about friendship and them talking to each other about being lonely and feeling left out. Do you have to go across the face with it and then in the whole, order for it to happen? What? Tom's the kind of Tom's the kind of guy who has Where no idea. Where are you guys idea getting a, this from? The whole thing of their conversation is she needs to pass on to go see her family, and Phoebe's family's upstairs, right? Tom's like that whole point who, at the end. Tom's the I don't kind even of get who where you guys no are getting this shit. That a girl is into him until she kisses him. Well, 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 Paul whatever. Rudd and her mom—they comfort her at the end in a way that was also like, uh, like they're comforting her. It seems more than just like a friend went away. There's something more there. You but guys again, are feeding way too much. No, are you reading the chat? Are you reading the chat? I don't care. Time? Did they see the movie? Yeah. I'm, well, some of, Can yeah. You do a That's poll? bullshit because there was nobody in the theater. <laughs> my theater was my theater. My theater was two thirds full. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, it, it has a very early show. My course, problem is this. Unless it's specifically there, you guys are fucking feeding into it way too goddamned much. And you're okay. going to put this on this movie and you're just going to justify it for all those fucking shippers out there who want her to be gay. I don't. I, I, don't, I, I don't want anything. It's just you guys are missing out. The whole point of is, is that she knows how to help her move to the other side. That's her whole thing. She's talking about leaving and going to the other side. Right. I mean, what? them being as far as her being a ghost, that's just one section of the film. She doesn't plan on being a ghost forever and fucking or anything. What, they don't talk about, well, how do we do this? Why would she even want to be that ghost thing? It really feels like she wanted to so that they could sort of have that moment together. And then, as Six said, she leans in. I'll give you one thing. They were smart enough to make it ambiguous on purpose so that it's not 100% clear. But I agree with culture that I wouldn't be surprised if there's a cut of this movie that it is clear and that somebody actually, you know, made no. this a more clear situation. Yeah, exactly. But it, 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 th listen to me here, folks. And I know some of you are now turned off by this, but don't be. Because if Tom's correct and there is no cut out there where there was that kind of thing, it's fine. I still enjoyed the movie. I still rated a 7 out of 10. It's still something you can go see. And it's not it's not going to be caught by most people that are no younger. it's it's not a reason not to go see the movie yeah. and especially because they do leave it ambiguous it makes me wonder but it's not something that, that you suddenly watch it and you're like oh i don't want to watch this movie in any case it's not even that i i care that much it's just that uh i i felt that that whole character and that whole situation between the two it, it wasn't my favorite part of the movie to begin with but i don't think that it it would it doesn't ruin the movie in any way way and i agree with tom that if nothing else it, it's not clear it doesn't they don't flat out say it it's just a matter of kind of a vibe but th that's my interpretation and it doesn't take away from the movie it's not like she's talking about love and shit during it she keeps asking her questions about what it's like to be a ghost and you even have the conversation between her and Dan Aykroyd, right? Like, she's just curious, because she always is curious, like a Spangler. She just wants to see what it's like to be a ghost, right? I think she's probably asexual, just like her fucking dad. I could never believe that her dad actually spawned, right? <laughs> like, that, that's that a was thing. A reach. That was a reach in the, first, in the last movie, yeah. Yeah, because, like, he, could, he was completely oblivious to Annie Potts in the first film. He's just like, yeah, I got no time for this shit. You know, well, you like, can be, be totally right. Look, all I said was I my mind went there, and maybe I'm I'm and I get person. it, and that's the problem because I'm having with it. And I'm it not trying to be Hollywood. and I'm not but, trying to be obtuse to it at all either. I'm just trying to say, yeah. like, we're feeding into that. We cannot feed into that if it's not oh. there. Right? Well, I mean, I, the I, difference is it's clearly yeah. there when we come to things like the Marvels and shit, and we were right, right? Like there's yeah. not even like an ambiguousness about it there, but they cut more out of it there. Now, again, like if, if you guys are right and they did cut something, I, I will say that is fucking weird, but at least they fucking cut it out because to me, it makes absolutely no sense why you would even go there. I just I saw it as more friendship than anything. And she was being tricked by the ghost anyway, because that's the whole point is she needs a human being. You right? know what? If, it, if they wanted friendship, then they needed to flesh out that storyline more. Part of the problem we have here is that because there's so many characters in this movie and they're trying to juggle so many different little plots and so, so many things with each of them, by the time we get to these two girls, we see so little of them that the only way I could think that she's so obsessed with her or she has such, you know, even friendship feelings towards her, we see her so little that the only thing I can think of is, well, maybe she digs her. You know what I mean? Because we just don't see enough 
that's one of the problems with the movie that a lot of these things they shoved so many things into one movie that i think things don't get fleshed out so it's either this was a great friendship that was supposed to be built and they never fleshed it out properly or maybe it's the other thing but uh that's my my take i don't think they Price. fleshed it out because she's playing a teenager she's a child well they so said it right in their whole much point are they actually yeah. going to flesh out a a, a child in a lesbian relationship. Well, you guys are no, also no, I mean the missing friendship. the entire I mean the point that's in the beginning of the yeah. film, right? The whole point of the film at the beginning is that Phoebe is not old enough to be a Ghostbuster. And she mm -hmm. says three years is an eternity to me. It seems like a few days to you guys, right? Because you're old. That's almost verbatim what she fucking says to her mom and to Paul Rudd, right? And then that's the whole thing with her observation with the ghost is that the ghost is forever a teenager. And she keeps asking her questions about that kind of shit. And then it's just about being a ghost. So the whole point of that is for her to understand that, yes, it could be worse. She could be stuck as a teenager for the rest of her fucking life. See, and I think people are looking way too much into that. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I'm right? saying that if they wanted to make them seem like they're just good friends, then they needed to show more of that friendship build up because as it probably it is, is on the floor, that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, because they well, stuck in price is right. Uh, uh, sorry, Clobby price is right because price is right. He the is. Price is right. Sorry. The price is right because <laughs> because he he's he says the same thing I did. There is too much in this movie. If with a right the right kind of cuts and a slightly different structure, you could have fleshed out a lot more that would have been more relevant to the film itself. It, 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 Patton Oswalt was a detour that uh, I think everybody is going to agree they left on the cutting room floor, and they could have left him all there. I would have been happy. Like you could have put him in at the end as somebody that was congratulating them or some crap like that. Or but brought him in at the end just when they're call, yeah. putting the call out to all the Ghostbusters or something like that. Yeah, yeah like, anything. Yeah, but but no, I agree with you there. That's the problem is we have too much shit going on in here with these other characters that are unimportant. Lucky podcast and the young uh, scientist guy could have all been removed in my yes. opinion. They, they didn't yeah. do anything special for me. Uh, and it's not that I don't like them. It's just a matter of it's too much. You, you know, you can't have so many different things at the same time. Phoebe wants to be in the action. Okay. So she gets basically set aside because she's too young because of child labor or whatever else. So she gets relegated back to the lab. Well, that's a good place for her because she knows an awful lot. Yeah. And again, she is the key to everything because without her melting the brass into her proton accelerator, there wouldn't be an end to this film. Yeah, but it's not like mm -hmm. I don't still don't get the key to everything where you're saying like just because she figures that out or what, whatever. Where what was the central character in the film? But it wasn't just her figuring that whole who, thing out. Who, but yes, who? these are Phoebe is now the central character. That I have no problem with that. We know okay. that. She's the key to everything. She was I, the key to you're she was the overstepping key to the, that though. No, she was the key to starting the disaster. And well, she was that was the key Melody fixing the that but, was but Melody she, who tricked her into it, though. Yeah, and Melody but fixed who it was, too with the but, match. But who was there? Yeah, yeah, and and again, I mean, obviously, ghosts in various forms can be somewhat corporeal, or they wouldn't be able to interact with the real world, or be able to strike. But a match she wouldn't even have known world. about the brass had the other guys not went to investigate. That's the only time the other characters play any part in the movie, really. The actress that played Melody was kind of annoying. I have to be honest. And oh, she's God. older than sixteen. She's she she acted she like says a, she's sixteen in the movie though. Kind of like that the Gen oh. Z. Uh, yes, that's like the whole the, point. Is she's forever sixteen? Like that's the uh, question oh, Phoebe asked her. She's right, like right. a Gen Z TikTok girl or something, and that's what what I felt. And, and the way she talked is kind of uh, almost like make uh, like a if Billie Eilish was an actress. Something about I the agree way with you on that. This is where I had her me. dialogue, and I'm just like, she's not even likable. You know what I mean? If they would have wanted to create a friendship where Phoebe is friends with this cool girl that has a likable quality to her, then you understand why she kind of gets duped. But this girl was annoying from the first second. It was it was like a TikTok girl. That's that's the best way to describe <laughs> her. Well, wow. like her. The thing is with Phoebe is like that's the thing is I don't even know if it's so much the friendship part at first. Right. She slowly becomes friends. And you're right. They needed to show that more because like six said, like she even jumped over one part, but they don't really show much there. Cause that's literally part of the same seat because they all go out for a ghost leaving podcast and, and Phoebe there at the, at the station. And then there's another call that comes in and then they go to the diner and they find out it's melody's diner. And that's where she's at. And that she's the ghost that they're getting the call for. And she hesitates shooting her. And then that's what sets off the next scene that you guys were talking about where she comes to the window because then they're kind of just oh, yeah. sussing yeah. each other out. But then that's the thing 
is if it was reality, that's where Phoebe, not knowing how to deal with human beings, should have known that something was up, but she didn't because she just forgives her right then and there. But and who, clearly, says, who says she doesn't know how to deal with human beings three years later? She yeah, still she does. Friends now. She's friends with. She podcasts. still does it. She's still like that though. She's like not that's a loner. Thing. She's more friends. Well, that's the problem podcasts. with having podcast in this fucking movie, right? Because that's where it goes against. Well, like we already know she has a friend, and that's the thing is, I almost thought the way that they were talking at first, they were going to get those two together, which would have been better. But it doesn't have. What, what difference does it make at the end of the day? I don't think she'll have any romantic interest. At so the don't end put of the him day. in the movie either, or either he's her I romantic say, yeah, interest either or get just, rid of him. They should have just saved him and not had him in this one. But yes. Yeah, but she needed to have some kind of friends. She needed somebody. Yeah. She needed yeah. some kind of peer. Well, that's they, where uh, Melody would have made more sense. Okay, that's so what if we're they would have removed podcast and they didn't want her as part of the ghost busting team because she's a kid, then you could have said something like, oh, like, you know, I, I maybe even a comment of how he's not there or maybe one of the ar- other characters mentions that now that she's here, she's not with him anymore and she I, you know she's kind of lonely say something just a toss away sentence and then this other stupid cw girl ghost shows up and uh at least it seems like they're making friends or something see i don't have a problem with the character as far as what the character represents what they're doing there and all that kind of business because like i said that plot line i swear there's a plot line that's almost exactly like this in one of the series i was getting deja vu through the whole fucking thing but anyway, where there's like this little ghost girl, I swear to fucking God. But anyway, um, that being said, I agree with you that the way she comes off is a problem. It's the actress. Yeah. Because either they should have A, made it a younger character, or and, and then that really would have hit the, the point home, I think, more to Phoebe. And that's what I think that everybody's kind of overlooking here. And this is where I didn't see it so much as a relationship thing is Phoebe is just like talking to her more of the respect aspect of that this girl will never get old, right? Like Phoebe is in a rush to grow up as to where this girl will never be able to grow up, right? Like that's kind of the point in that relationship that I could tell from it, in my perspective. I, look, bringing... Can, can, but to finish my point time. though of what Price was saying is I agree with him that as far as the, her not being likable as an actress or whatever, because here's a problem I've had with a lot of modern films is that they, they pick these characters or these actresses to play these roles and she did not feel like somebody who's been dead for probably, and we don't even know. They don't really tell you how long she's been dead for, right? Yeah. Right. It and that's the other she, thing. She's been dead for five minutes. 20 minutes. She, exactly. Right. Yeah. She did a TikTok video <laughs> and then she fell off the cliff. You know, the one that they, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. on cliff and they slip. That's what she did. And then she was in the movie. I yeah. mean, if she's supposed to be somebody who died like in the early 1800s or late 1800s or early 1900s, no something way. like that, you yeah. don't get that vibe at all, right? And not that's the thing all. is a lot of this movie calls back to a lot of older shit from that time period and so you're like okay is she connected to that somehow and you think that that's kind of what it makes sense because for those who don't know that's the whole point of her character she's duping a human into doing what they're doing to to actually let out this entity right okay. and this entity has lied to her and told her that they will get her to the other side with her family right well and phoebe think- on the other hand knows how to get to the other side because she helped her grandfather so that's where they start their whole relationship so anyway, well, um, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say. So my thoughts are the character Melody. She burned down the diner with her family inside, and she went along with them. That would be my guess. Probably something like that. It would have been. Oh, nice that's built on the uh, built on the spot of the building that she burned down. Exactly. She said it was an apartment. Building. Yeah, that yes. was, and it was called so, Melody's. So, so that's so that's my guess. Um, but the other thing we find out later is that she's the one who killed her fucking family. <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah. that's actually what I thought immediately. That's the that, well, see, we did too. But that's where you film, clearly, yeah, the, the characters film, the got film, something wrong with her. That's the not film, fleshed out either. That's also random, in my opinion. Yeah, well, just I think the name would, of the diner. Yeah, like exactly. That. And and I think it would have mm. been fun to sh- to have that out there. But the audience wants to know some things. Yes, the old gold bust, old Ghostbusters are in it plenty. As far as I'm concerned, well, and the they're... thing is, is the problem with you guys shipping these two when they're not shipping is you're getting a bunch of people going, "Oh, it's woke, it's woke, it's woke." It's not though. It's I not never said it was woke. remotely I, I said it's, woke. I said it's no. ambiguous and it doesn't take away from the enjoyment of the it movie. But who said the, it was woke? The in fact, it has a very po- and this is what I was trying to say before. It has a very positive pro family message in it. It does. Right, right. I, I, I mean, love yeah. the Paul Rudd stuff. In fact, that was my favorite part of the movie was him trying to balance how do I be a boyfriend to these kids' mother. It, it, where's my line stop of being a buddy and being a stepdad now 
kind of thing come into play. That was that, there was great stuff in there. You're a hundred percent right. right. That, that was a highlight of the movie for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. look, there's there's good family stuff in this. There's great opportunities. So that's where to I have a hard out. time believing they had any Let ambitions to try and make it wake woke. But anyway, go cut culture. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just want to, I, and then I want to let Bobby talk because the poor guy, we're, tr- we're just trapped. That's fine, over. man. No, we're good. Buddy. Okay. But first of all, the film is not woke. Is Could there be some elements in it that seem very modern? Yes. But again, we are looking at this film. Four or five of us, four of the five of us think there was something that was cut out. Doesn't matter. The film overall has great, a good family message. You, there are laughs. You will laugh. There are funny things in it. It, it, it very much has the, 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 the jump scares in it that you would expect. There's three or four good jump scares in here. Um, mm-hmm. I enjoyed the movie enough to give it a above average rating. Okay. So seven out of 10, that's, that's pretty high right now. My ratings have been falling right around five on average lately. And um, I feel like, I feel like you're, if you go spend the 20 bucks as somebody said in the, in the, in the chat, cause I feel like we're ignoring the chat too, but if you go spend the 20 bucks, well, a person, those here. yeah, right. you're, you're going to um, you're going to feel like you got your twenty dollars worth, which is also something rare when you go to a film. At least in my opinion, if if you don't get twenty bucks out of it, then you know hit up hit up six. She's rich, and she'll uh, she'll. Well, take culture's care of a rich YouTuber. If, if you <laughs> like, <Sure. laughs> if you like Ghostbusters, if you like the first movie, even if you if you like Ghostbusters, like Tom said, even the animated series, there's a lot to enjoy here. Uh, mm-hmm. It's hard to make me because of how much I like the first Ghostbusters movie. It's hard to make me n- completely just sit there and be like, "Oh, I hate this." I enjoyed it. it. It's certainly a fine movie. It's just that when I look at it, I feel like it could have been a great movie, and instead, it's just pretty good. But, My problem, is, yeah, is that basically, yeah. But, but pretty good Ghostbusters is still better than nothing. It's not. It, it's better than 2016 Ghostbusters. It's oh not, gosh, it's like yeah, sex it, and pizza. Even it, if it's bad, it's still. It's, it's well, that's where I feel like I'm having to defend this movie now when I didn't even really care for it as much. Defend it. As, I, I don't. I don't. I don't see the lesbian relationship I as a either. negative. Well, I didn't see it at all. Like that's the I thing. I didn't. But I'm not. But the fact that I'm saying that I saw it, that's not uh, a con. It's a minor to thing. It's ambiguous it and it's not the focus of well, the movie. Well, that's the problem. We spent most of the time talking about that instead of everything else. And that's the thing is, I think there's a lot more positives in this movie than negatives. Like I loved the Slimer bits. I thought that actually gave Finn Wolfhard something to actually fucking do in this one. <laughs> like because the first otherwise one. Otherwise, he'd have nothing to do, which is another yeah. problem. This is well, too, too but he has to be there, the unfortunately. Movie. Yeah, but, but there, that, there's too many characters in the movie. They didn't know what to do with them. The the yeah. story is all over the place. And the, that's and why that's they sad. had to sacrifice Lucky yeah. and and podcast. And yeah, the well, other they're all jammed into the firehouse. Guy. And they inside and they, on they, that look, main floor. There's a lot did, of people in there. And Finn Finn was wasted. I'm sorry, he just was. Even even with the Slimer bit, I you could have you could have not leaned into the trope that he's an idiot, a lazy bum. Well, you know what I what, noticed. Go ahead. Because they reused a bunch of jokes from stuff that's never that never made the yearly cuts. That's what Finn Wolfhard's joke is. In fact, they even used the we were planning on burning the place down joke. They got cut out in the other one, and they used they were going to use that for Afterlife, and they didn't use it. So they're reusing a lot of bits that never made the other Ghostbuster films, and I like that aspect. And that's what this is. It's just sort of the the stuff we didn't get to see with Rick Moranis in part two, basically. Something else that they reused the the very beginning of the movie. Uh, they have this poem by Robert Frost called Fire and Ice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That poem is the start of the third Twilight movie. Exactly. Oh, Jesus. I was like, uh, what is happening here? And then and again, the mother says a line in the movie that I can't remember. Um, but it was an almost verbatim quote from one of the Twilight movies again. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? And nobody else <laughs> would have ever picked up. I mean, you got to be hardcore Twilight in order to pick up. On well, that. that's clearly because what's her face read Robert Frost too, probably. Yeah, yeah. I just, I couldn't believe it when they started off the movie with the, with the Robert Frost hmm. poem. Weird. I actually enjoy how they reuse lines from the other films without them making feel like they're obvious. Like star Wars does lately. Like we have gotten, it was fine. if you're not even paying attention to it, like you wouldn't even notice it. That's my point. And I'm not even talking about the Bustin makes me feel good scene. That's clearly <laughs> obvious. That was, yeah, it was funny. That I'm was talking about laugh. the other stuff. But like even in fun. the, even in afterlife, for instance, there's like the, oh, I always wanted to do this when he about, when he's about to open the trap, for instance, like there's a couple of those kind of lines in here. I can't specifically remember because I've only seen this once, but and there's a lot of Easter eggs I saw in the background, just like in the afterlife one too. 
fact, I'm almost positive I've seen the boom box from part two and a few other things in there. Just little things like the fans, like you said, the fans are really going to dig this. There's a lot here for the fans to love. There's a lot of ghost busting because that was another thing that was a big complaint about the last movie is that you hardly get any ghost busting. And the one scene with Muncher is almost forced and obligatory because they just kind of it almost feels forced where it's at. At least in this movie, you have zero excuses. There's tons of ghost busting throughout the entire film. Probably more ghost busting than we've seen in any Ghostbusters movie whatsoever. But that's probably why it feels more like an animated episode that it does the movies because at the it almost feels like the the frost ghost guy is like a afterthought in the background through most of the movie till the end and again that's where the pacing of the movie comes into play with the I, editing I I think. Seen a little the movie. Bad? yeah because he's almost okay. like i mean he's lingering but then it's like he comes in so late in the game he does and it's just kind of like okay so you had all this other stuff going because there's just so much ghost busting going on up to that point right like they have what they bust like fucking 10 ghosts up to that point it feels like maybe not that many i'm being a bit exaggerating but like they deal with a lot of shit before that just before that and then that all happens in the latter quarter of the film and that's another thing i guess i'll say as a positive i was expecting a huge environmental message in this movie because i just watched aqua turd this last weekend oh, and yeah. i shit you not within 22 minutes of the fucking first part of the movie there's like five references to environmentalism oh, yeah no they did not they one didn't in this entire movie thank no. god whether they yes. got cut out or not i don't give a shit true the whole thing has nothing to do with environmentalism it's just like that i'm glad they didn't bring that up at all once the, the only thing i'll say is is that i like i think they did more with bill murray in this movie than in afterlife but still out of the og characters there's this kind of underlying feeling that he's not as excited to be there and i feel like they they I, I could have seen more of him or, or do I wanted to see him do a little more. It wasn't terrible, but I, I, I wasn't a hundred percent happy. I agree with you price. I didn't really see, Oh, there's Bill Murray acting just like Bill Murray on screen. I never, I never got that. I was, I was oh. feeling a little unfulfilled by I, my, I, Bill I, I love, I love, everybody probably already knows this, but I love Vankman. It's my favorite character. Um, you know, I thought he was in this one actually. I thought he was better than I I like I'm I know he probably shot everything he shot in three days because that's just how bro rolls. Yeah. But you know, he is always amazing. And in this one he just delivered. And I'm sorry. I there are certain people that you put with certain characters, and he was his character. It was good. I just wanted to see more of him, and I think I that the more. interaction with the other Ghostbusters, I liked Ray and, and Winston uh, interacting and the conversations they had. I felt that Bill Murray, if they, they just would have maybe put him in a few more scenes and had them connect a little more, Green, something, yeah. something was missing for me. I didn't dislike him. I'm always happy to see Bill Murray, and as, especially as Venkman. I just feel like it was better than what we got in the previous movie, but but not as good as I wanted. Well, I feel like he's yeah, the reason yeah. why I probably didn't mind yeah. Nana, Jimmy, Jimmy, Mommy as much <laughs> because their scene together is one of the best scenes in the whole fucking movie where he's being the psychologist and he's right. And that it plays was, right into his whole testing the effect testing of negative thing, right. reinforcement. Yeah. yeah was it was fun. like a double callback. It was a callback to when they did not like those kind of uh, sensors on Rick Moranis and Sigourney Weaver in the first one. Uh, plus the it, zapping the zapping that's what he was doing he's, right, he's it was testing it, it yeah because that's double. what he's doing right it was a double double callback the zapping at the university and sigourney and uh rick moranis and i thought that was pretty cool as as uh as for kumail ninyani or whatever his name is i think that this is this, see for a few years he accidentally thought that he was like a much bigger star and hollywood did all this stuff with him i think that is a very minor supporting character with a little bit of comic relief surrounded by the right people i think he's actually okay he didn't he didn't ruin it i thought he was fine they didn't even go for the yeah. obvious one there either, which I was actually kind of glad at the end, even though it probably would have got a big laugh out of, out of the most people anyway. And that was at the end, if he'd have just said, what are you doing? He'd be like, I'm testing the effect of negative reinforcement on ESP ability. And he'd be like, well, I'll tell you what the effect is. It's pissing me off. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, that's that at least they didn't even go there, but that's what he's doing. That's literally what he's doing. Right. He figures out as soon as he can affect the fire. If he starts pissing him off, he starts throwing pens. at him endlessly. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. Yeah. Yeah, I have but one yeah, more no, thing that I want to poop on yeah. about this movie, uh, which is in disagreement with what culture was saying about the family dynamic. I didn't like how the mother, her relationship with her children, but I grew up like leave it to beaver. 
you know, my mom was very nurturing and, and overtly nurturing, I should say, overtly loving. Um, you know, my dad went off to work and mom stayed home and sent us out the door with hot cocoa in our tummies. Um, and she's kind of like, oh, you're bleeding. Oh, you'll be fine. That, that I don't, I personally don't like that kind of. She's more like, okay, I know mothers like that. So like, I will defend this mom. <laughs> she's not a good mother. No, they tried but to make her better this one. I think she is better in this one. Yes. Better in this yeah. one. She's she's more of a mother now. But yeah, she is a more realistic mother com- compared to sometimes what we see in television and movies. Because yeah, what you're talking about six is not probably the norm for most people. Most mothers will throw a shoe at them, right? Like, <laughs> I still feel like there's. I, I got beat like with my plastic sword once for saying "God damn" when I was a kid. So. <laughs> Yeah, I look, there's some stuff that happened to me as a young person that, you know, reinforced a better behavior when it came to family interaction. But the same thing happens here. I mean, there's a good family message here. And, you know, Gary's trying to figure out how he's going to exist in Phoebe's world. And, you know, and um, oh, I forget the kid's name. Uh, he, just trying to trying to figure out how to exist in these kids world. But at the same time, you know, being involved with their mother. You know, and you get to the end of the film and, you know, that, that that's reinforced. I mean, uh, Phoebe takes responsibility or tries to take responsibility for all of her selfish actions that, of course, she's the key to everything. So she led them into all this problem uh, because she was being a dumb kid and, you know, doing things she wasn't supposed to do. And then in the end, she's the key to everything because uh, she makes it so they can capture the ghost. Well, so, partially, um, I will agree with you, but the other half is not so much she's the key to everything is I felt like that was where Ray they fucked up with. Cause he did not take that thing as seriously as he should, as normally Ray would have. Cause when, whenever has Ray ever come across something that would fuck up a, that would basically be completely off the charts. Literally. Like he says stuff like that all the time. But we, for the first time ever see something break a PKE meter. Yeah. And, and he just I, leaves I, it sit there until after supper. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this again. I am not calling this film woke. I am just telling it like it is and what I saw. I didn't think the film was terribly woke. I didn't think there were woke elements in it at all. But there are some things that people will equate with modernity, and you're not going to be able to get away with that. I mean, there, there are going to be people who are going to see ghosts. I agree. But again, I believe it was there. I'm not sure to what extent. Uh, again, it's another coming of age story. Um, and, but at the same time, Phoebe's story mirrors the story that the ghost melody is, it went through and being responsible for killing her family. And Julie's not wrong. Paul Rudd's pretty charming. No, I've, I've actually, I, I, that's part of the review that you're going to see for me either late tonight or tomorrow morning. It's going to be me saying I'm about done with Paul Rudd. Really? I thought he was great in this. Oh, he was I, I, am, yeah. I, 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 you guys are misunderstanding me. I'm about done with Paul Rudd being Paul Rudd. I'm about done with it. So, you know, I, he, he, he gets one more I even chance. Love this, I even love the scene where him and his, the girlfriend half ass fight and he's trying to be an asshole and he can't even be an asshole. Right, that too. was funny. <laughs> 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 that was good actually yeah I, I, he didn't bother me it was at all, almost paul. like a comment on paul rudd being paul rudd at that point <laughs> like, he can't even do it right like, you guys are misunderstanding what i'm saying i guess so i guess so man i i don't know i don't have a problem with him i, don't, I mean hey, you six? don't either but six six yes are, are, are you drinking i'm drunk baby <laughs> that's what i thought <laughs> do they have beer or something at the bar? no the, uh, no she theater? she turned she turned every time i say uh i'm gonna be doing a review into a drinking game she's trying to oh, get the chat shit. to participate well you're gonna kill the chat <laughs> <laughs> i love uh, you guys i, I the, the amount I of abuse i get from my friends is ridiculous but i love them so that's what friends uh, i thought I thought Paul Rudd was great here as usual. So yeah, Tom, I, know, I know, I well, know. Well, let me put it to, well, just so people know, here's my like curvature for these films, right? Like the first film obviously is a 10 out of 10. There's no beef about right, that. I right, mean, that we've already great. brought it up several times. It's a perfect film. Second film has issues. Yes. I would probably give that a 7.5 or an eight out of 10 afterlife. I'd probably same thing about a 7.5 or an eight out of 10. I thought it was really well done. I had a few issues with it, but Overall, I thought it was very satisfying, and I've seen it quite a few times now. 
So it has rewatchability. This one, I want to see a few more times, but I'm leaning in the, the 6.5 to 7 range. Boom. But yeah. sometimes the more Boom. I think about it, there's things that lead me into the 7.5-ish range to where it's closer to Afterlife, and then some things not so much. And again, I think it's partially because of all the things that we've talked about with the issues with it, but there's so much to love about this movie, and that's where I don't want people to feel like no, you're going to walk I, out of this movie feeling unfulfilled in any way. It is very much on par with Ghostbusters 2 in that respect, right? Like, it, Yeah, you know. exactly. Yeah, it, it, that's exactly it. And somebody sent me a, a message that, it, that, uh, that they had the same epiphany as well. It's that, you know, Ghostbusters, one fantastic movie. We talked about it being nearly perfect, 1984. This is Ghostbusters 2. That's what this is. And, I, it, it, and it's perfectly fine. I don't know what Mecca J is talking about. Does anybody know what Mecca J is talking about? I I have no idea. Um, There was no movie that came out in 2016 about Ghostbusters. Yeah, was there Green Bay? I don't know. Did they have a good year that year? Green Bay, the Packers? I don't know. They haven't had a good year in a long time. Well, they usually make it to the playoffs. No, that was... What the fuck, dude? Are you fucking 80? (laughs) Far have been a Packer for like 30 years, man. That was was Aaron. Aaron Rodgers. Now that's a different story. Yeah. Aaron anyway. Anyhow, yeah, I think Aaron Rodgers was a Packer longer than Brett Favre, actually. But uh, um, yeah, no. Back to the film. Like yeah, the 2016 movie is a fucking horrible ass movie. It is like not, a four, not a ghost at best. <laughs> okay, well let me let me ask. I want to ask all of you guys this, starting with Clobby. Yes, ma'am. Just simple yes or no. Is the movie woke? No, I didn't no. think so. No, no I don't think it so. Clobby, Tom. Uh, I'm, I'm no, sorry. Absolutely. I thought you yeah. said yeah. It's, absolutely. It, do you recommend the movie? Uh, yeah, it's a mild recommendation. Preferably, like as Tom was mentioning, two hardcore f- or fans, Ghostbusters fans, will really enjoy it. Uh, so yeah, it's an okay. I don't really, you know, I'd give it about a six and a half to a seven. So I okay, guess so you that's know, a mild recommendation. That's like the same number that Tom gave it. Isn't that the same number you gave it, Tom? Six and a half, seven. Yeah, and I wonder how I'll feel after I see it a second time. See, that's the thing is. Yeah. Maybe then you'll see the lesbianism. I might like it more, I might like it less. I mean, now I will be looking for it because you guys brought it up more. So I just want to say that crossed my mind. I wasn't certain of it, but it kind of did, like everyone's saying. I have to be honest. But, Tom, you might be right. And if this this is just overt cynicism on our parts, Hollywood has earned it. Now, Price, do do you think the movie's woke? No, I wouldn't say that it's woke. I think that uh, w- with the exception of that ambiguous thing, which is ambiguous and is it's it's not a hundred percent clear. Uh, even even that, it doesn't make the movie woke. It's not you know, it's a small thing in the movie. I wouldn't say that the movie is woke. I would say that I agree with Tom and what Clobby said that it's probably a six point five to seven range type of movie. It means that it's not a failure. And if you like Ghostbusters, there's something to enjoy there. But for me, I still feel that it falls short of what it could have been. Culture, do you think the movie's woke? No, I but I do think And that, do you recommend it? Of course I do. And I said Price, do you times. recommend it? Yes, if you like Ghostbusters, you'll probably enjoy this movie. Uh e- even even though it's not perfect, uh it's it's a pleasant time at the theater. Okay, Tom, do you think the movie's woke? I already answered that, but yeah, no. Well, I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> you said and, and, no. And, do you and, recommend it? You recommend it, right? Yeah, yeah, I just no, especially make if you're a Ghostbuster perfect, fan, yeah. Yeah, I just want to make it perfectly clear that even though we're doing, we're like pointing out every tiny little negative thing, I just I just want to make sure that people know we're, rec- oh, basically we're recommending this movie. And yeah. for a $90 Almost million dollar the budget, they squeezed a lot yeah. of CGI and decent CGI. True. I mean, there's some practical in this. Don't get me wrong. Like, I know Slimer is completely practical, from my knowledge, I, except for like three I, shots and some other I'll, stuff. But yeah, I'll say one more thing to add to to this before I go and grab a drink, and I'm I'm going to need a lot of drinks tonight. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, this film is actually probably more wholesome than the original Ghostbusters film. Yes, I would say because it's because it's more family oriented. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah. And I did like Paul Rudd uh, jumping in and acting as a father figure. And then when Phoebe calls him dad, yeah, that um, was pretty nice. That, was yeah, okay. that touched was him. Nice. And th- I thought, Oh, that's so nice that he, he understands and he acknowledges the weight of what she just said to him. 
I liked that moment. Yes. Well, All I right. guess we're done because yeah. Tom yeah, died. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. What was your favorite parts about the movie? Um, I, I loved, like I said, Paul Rudd, great. Dan Aykroyd's bits, great. Uh, except for he should have been the one to figure out the orb stuff. Uh, they didn't need Pat Oswald, obviously. Yeah. And I'm not trying to be a butt, but no, seriously. <laughs> uh, actually, I thought the mom was better handled this film this time out. Uh, I liked Phoebe just fine as I did last time. I mean, she's a little whinier this time than she was in the last film, but she was kind of whiny from time to time in the last film, too. Um, the newer characters, eh, they're all right, I guess, except for Patton. Couldn't stand. Finn, like you guys are right, he didn't really get much to do here, but I did like his bits with Slimer. Uh, I did like some of the other cameos we got. I mean, the, the guy at the library felt a little... Yeah, yeah. why would he I still be at the that. library after all those years? It was cool, but it was kind of like... It was kind of fun. Much, yeah. Yeah. No, it's the New they York lingered on him too long. That's, I mean, other than Library of Congress, where are you going to go after working there? Yeah. No, I know, but I mean, he's lingering. They linger on him too long. That was my only kind of thing. It just felt kind of awkwardly weird. Well, that was very fan servicey on a very almost exaggerated level. I didn't hate it, oh, but it, it, it was very fan servicey. <laughs> and I got to kind of rem remind myself that it's most likely Rick Moranis' fault that he wasn't here. Um, although oh, Sigourney yeah. said she was not asked to be back. I don't understand why that is the That's case. They could have really? wow. they they had home. her. Yeah, she could have put on they a suit. I, she could I have just walked her. down the street. I have to ask you a question. If you had to pick between Bill Murray and Sigourney Weaver, who would you want in the movie? Oh, clearly Bill, Bill Murray. Murray. Bill Murray. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, it could have been a, a either. It was probably if I had to take a guess this time out, it probably had more to do with scheduling between Avatar shit and her price because they had to keep the budget mm. down. But then again, you have all these other ancillary characters. I would have gladly sacrificed to, to get her in there instead. And again, Rick, I'm sure it's just his choice. He just decided he's he wants his new his big film comeback to be in that Honey I Shrunk the Kids reboot. So I, I didn't even like Honey I Shrunk the Kids. I thought that was a dumb movie, and I couldn't. I like the first two, and that's it. I kind of like the first one. I thought it was it was okay at best. I saw it once in the theater. Well, you need to understand that's his highest grossing film where he was a star. Yeah, yeah but you know what? One, when I think of Rick Moranis today, I think of a uh, of Dark Helmet. I think of Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah, then, but all those movies, he's not the main main star. That's his. Right? That's his best work is Spaceballs. Yeah. Oh, I agree. And then, and then that was, you you know what that movie was with the Honey I Shrunk the Kids? It's just just like Eddie Murphy did those nutty professor movies or whatever mm -hmm. the Doctor Doolittle, whatever he did to kind of make money from families. That's what that movie was. That's why it's the highest grossing thing. But nobody looks at any Murphy today and say, wow, uh, I love that nutty professor. They think Beverly Hills Cop. They think Coming to America. They think yeah. Trading Places. They think 48 Hours. And if Yeah, Rick but Moran maybe Mur Eddie Murphy wanted to make something his kids could see. And, and that's that's very nice. But now they're already all grown up. All 70 of his kids are already 70. So he doesn't need that anymore. So nobody talks about <laughs> the nutty professor. And Rick Moranis should, should uh, abandon this whole stupid Honey, I Shrunk the Kids thing because it d doesn't have that kind of lasting power. It's not an iconic like Ghostbusters or Spaceball. And he should have been in this movie. So I'm, I'm with Tom. I think he should have been here. And the fact that he's not, uh, I, I think that's a boo-boo. Yeah, well, but I understand. If he didn't want to be not, here, then I think he shouldn't be here. I mean, just yeah, because the fans saying. want it to happen doesn't mean that he should say, I well, understand. Yeah, okay, if this group of people I've never met really wants me to be there, then I'll be there. Maybe he's making yeah. movies now for his grandkids. Well, no, like I said, I mean, I understand exactly where Price is coming from. I actually share his opinion and his and he's spitting facts as far as I'm concerned. Ghostbusters is his, I mean, Lewis Tully's his best role of all time. Hands mm -hmm. down. Like I mean, it's oh, one of the most good too. Space uh, space it's good, but no, like as far as like pound uh, for pound, yeah. probably funniest characters ever in histories of movies. Yeah, Lewis Tully's Bruce. up there. Yeah, very strange, funny, yeah. strange Bruce well, and Strange Brew's great too, but I mean, as far as that goes, I mean, performance wise, but look, yeah. he's looking at it as I'm making my big comeback after 30 years, and this is my biggest movie. I get where you're coming from. I agree with you for the most part, Price. I didn't mind the Honey movies, I like them just fine, but. Except for that third one was stupid as shit. But uh, that, that being that. said, he he is looking at it. I'm sure from the perspective of I'm going to make a comeback. It's going to be a, my biggest role. And it may not be our favorite role, but it's his biggest role. Unfortunately, 
Uh, and he's going to probably not even be in the movie all that much, too. That's the other weird thing. Because the whole movie's about looking for him. So it's like The Force Awakens all over again. But anyway, let's see what you guys are talking about out there. We got I Cthulhu says no sexually enticing Ghostbusters popcorn bucket. No, the bastards didn't have it. <laughs> Actually, it looked painful. Yeah. And Batman. Well, yes, uh, the failing containment unit was a huge part of the plot. Uh, in fact, it plays throughout the whole film, actually. Oh, well, yeah. We didn't we even get... talk about that. Yeah, but it is a big part of the plot. True. Truly. But yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to say, if anything, Paul will love this because of the gadget porn. And this has even more gadget porn than the last one did. You know, I liked how they how they updated it. You know, when they're when they're driving through the streets of New York and they're chasing after the was it the sewer monster, and they use a drone to catch it. I thought, oh, okay, yeah. I can respect that. That they've you know updated their their method of catching ghosts. Oh yeah, Dan ghosts. Aykroyd's really hyped up on that. In fact, I was watching some behind the scenes stuff from the last couple movies, and he was talking about all the gear porn and shit. I'm like, God, it sounds like Paul. <laughs> And he's he's just going off about it all. It's funny. Um, how did how was Venkman? Did he get much screen time? Asked Snowdub. Uh, he could have used a little bit more, but uh, he's in it about three times ish. He, he rolled in. He rolled in and did his thing. He really yeah. did. Like I said, that's Bill though. Bill Bill like okay, I'll be here for three days of shooting, mm -hmm. or I'll be here for five days of shooting, or whatever. And they got as much as they could out of him, and he was brilliant in every moment of it. But why does he need to be such a jerk? I mean, at this point, he's been canceled by some studios. Just come and do this thing. I mean, what is he, a wise ass? This is a role that people want to see him in. I think he could have come for a few more days. But I, it's like you said, when I see him, I like seeing him. I just wish I could see a little bit more of him. Agreed. Well, why does anybody do anything? Why did George have to sell Lucasfilm? People <laughs> well, do what they also, want to do, regardless of what the fans want. Well, and he's very well aware that, and this is the thing he's kind of pushing for, and uh, that this is more or less this is a new generation right like we gotta and i get it some people are just not into this right and they're like why is phoebe the focus because she is the focus guys sorry I, I hate to bring that up to you but she's the only familial connection we have to the original series now so going forward as the old guys die off she is going to be the focal point if they continue to make these movies i don't know if that's going to be the case after this weekend because I don't know how the box office is going to do, but it's clearly set up for a sequel where they got to go catch all these ghosts now. I so, don't yeah. think they're. I don't think they're going to get a third one of these. Just, I, I, uh, I don't think myself, so either. Yeah. I, I don't think. I think, so. I think based on the projections, and I think they're right. But I will tell you this: um, it, there's also there there are plenty of familial people in this that could be the center of it. But you know, you put Phoebe well, there. Bro. Who else though? Nobody else has kids in the movie. And the only thing I'm griped about so far that they haven't brought Oscar in, but we have no idea. He's probably, I actually was half ass thinking that that one guy was going to end up being Oscar. And cause everybody's like, well, no, he has a British accent. I'm like, yeah, well, his dad went to England. Didn't you remember that? So what if he spent most of his life over in England with his dad? I don't know, but it didn't matter because it's not him. So about, yeah. So wait, so you're saying that Phoebe's the only blood relative. That's the only one we got. Ray never had any kids. Uh, now, Winston what if the says daughter he has pops kids. Out another one? Well, Why isn't Finn Wolfhard, Wolfhard a blood He is relative? too, but he's clearly like a Venkman character anyway. But you have, Winston does say he has kids, but we haven't met any of them. We have no idea how old they are. So. But that doesn't mean we won't meet them later. Like, that's another thing is they could have done that in this movie instead of bringing back fucking podcast and Lucky, who Lucky was one of the worst Waste of space in the first movie. She was barely <laughs> even there. Wasn't and half, most of her a, shits gets cut out in this one. So wasn't she supposed to be a love interest for Finn? Because this time they she just still kind of is, but they're just there. They, like, they yeah. seem like platonic friends. Like they've been platonic friends for years in this movie. I think her shit all got put on the cutting room floor. Hell, most of the shit that she's in in the trailer is on the cutting room floor. Like that cool bit in the trailer. I, I can't even believe they cut this out because this had to be, you Which know, one? a couple. Hundred, a couple hundred dollars, ten thousand dollars, or worth of fucking CGI, where she started to get fr froze. They cut that whole bit out. In the trailer, it shows her get froze from her hands all the way up to her eyeballs. Maybe she was gonna that. die, and then somebody said, "Oh, no, they cut, this. they cut out just we just seen her hand get froze, and then it cuts to the next bit, and then to to the other guys, and then it cuts back to him, and she's on the floor with Phoebe, and Phoebe's trying to warm her up." Hmm. Right, that was weird. That was weird. Yeah, where there's a whole section there that must have got cut. I think Phoebe got her out of the ice. I think she got froze up, but Phoebe figured out how to get her out of the ice somehow. 
So is Are Phoebe they... a Mary Sue? Uh, mm. She's a Spangler and she's had help. Like, that's the thing. I get where culture's coming from with his key to everything thing. But look, I don't mind her because in the first movie, we had Spangler show her how to put the things together. She learned from her grandpa. She clearly studies. You know, it's not like she just shows up and she's best. And she fucks up a lot in this movie, actually. Right. She's in, she's not perfect. I, I can't say that she's perfect. In fact, if she would have just fucking nailed that stupid ghost in the first place, none of this movie would have happened. Right? Like, that's the point. Right. Like, she pulls a, a Star-Lord there. Now, there, I will say, that's the closest, I guess. But even then, still, I, I, I still feel like people are stretching for that. And I heard it before I came here. So it's not like it's, I'm new to the idea. But I didn't hear it until after the movie. Because my 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 buddy's friends that were there with us, he was the first one I ever heard say anything about it. Because he goes, I thought they were supposed to be lesbians. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, somebody was saying something in some review about them being lesbians. I'm like, uh, oh yeah, I've been googling okay. it. Yeah, you're, 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 you're not. You're not. You're <laughs> that not was the old. first it came to my attention. I'm like, weird. Hmm. See, and that's what it felt like to me was a bunch of shippers doing it. I'm like, okay, that's got to be the weirdo shippers no, doing it. No, no. We're not there, shippers. There was something there. No shipping. I don't want to ship them. I don't want them to be good. I thought the girl, the blonde girl I, was I annoying. can never, yeah, I, I guess I annoying. never got that out of it. I, I, maybe, but I'd have to watch it again, I guess. Let's not right. go back I, down there. The, the part <laughs> that they're, they're both ghosts, the part that they're both ghosts and Phoebe kind of looks at her and they kind of lean towards you and mm -hmm. then she goes, boo, that is very, very mm -hmm. strange. I guess I can see that part there, but I don't even see how they would kiss or anything. Or why I they thought would kiss. for sure that the, these two ghosts are about to kiss. That's what I thought watching it. It's not that that's yeah. what I wanted. You know, the weird thing is I didn't want, want one thing or another. It just seemed like the, the directing of the scene was leading towards that. And then she goes, boo, but it gets cut off because the other one kind of betrays her. So it, it never goes to that next step. And maybe it never was intended to. Uh, but it is. I don't get uh, what I'm supposed to fight here, though, guys. That's the thing. It's, I mean, I get where people are saying it could be loosely implied. I'm not going to argue that point, but like, it's hard to say that, oh, they're lesbians when nothing actually fucking happens, nor is it brought up in any way, shape, or form. You don't no, have to, not. like, it, it, have. That's what they do, though. That's what I'm saying. To, I don't have to have a woman's <sighs> finger inside of me in order for me to say that I'm a lesbian. Oh, so Oscar and, and, and fucking Felix fuck now because they argue like a married couple. No. That's the whole fucking yeah. joke. They don't, they don't look at That's the problem. Why do we get to that point now again? Why and that's where I'm saying. Oscar and Felix I'm not don't mad look so much as other. I'm just like frustrated with it because this is what the fucking shippers do. They no. look for something that isn't there. And even if it's just subtle or they think it's subtle, they create this whole like fucking yarn conspiracy theory of, See, they're gay because of this. I didn't go into the movie like, looking for gay. No, I didn't either. And Oscar and Felix, I get it. We're they, they sensitive for that now. In a naughty still. Way. Oscar and Felix don't look at each other in a naughty way. I'm just no, saying. No, but they argue like a married couple, though. They That's... don't look at each other naughty, though. Yeah, but they don't whole... lean in. They don't okay, lean in. Better, look okay, like they're, they're Ernie and Bert, then. There's a better example. <laughs> there's been that debate for years. <laughs> are, you, are you comparing them to gay puppets? <laughs> at this point... Like, I seriously, like, I'm not trying to say you guys are wrong that, that they haven't tried to do this stuff to us, but now we're really, I think, pushing it into that domain where it's not really there unless there was something that was cut out. And even if it was cut out, good. That means that they were well aware enough to see that it wasn't going to work. Did you right. go to the bathroom and, during this movie, Tom? And it, and it, no, not once. This is the best on. thing about it being a two-hour okay. fucking movie. I agree with Because I that. squeezed all the piss out I could before this movie started because <laughs> I didn't want to miss a minute. I, I, and I, I stayed I, through each and every credit, too. I'm just, <laughs> and yes, I'm, the end credit scene was fucking hilarious. <laughs> I'm going to try this again. I'm going to say this again. Whether or not there was anything done, the weird energy was there, whether or not it led to anything doesn't matter. Whether or not those scenes are on the cutting room, flu, room floor doesn't matter. What's funny is I still will say I didn't see anything woke about this. I did see some bits of modernity, but I saw none of the stuff that would no, turn yes. anybody off. I'm sorry. You know, and, and but this look, is what I'm I mean, getting I'm at a you guy. Dear, to put it better I, than I did. Sorry. I, 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 I'm a guy, you know, if two ladies are into each other, you know, usually people pay for that. I honestly wouldn't be really surprised if she was, but one of them's a kid. Yeah. yeah. Um, Tom, I'm That's not my saying... other issue. 
I'm not even sitting here saying that you're wrong when you say that you didn't see anything. I'm just saying this is what I saw. Maybe it was because she's nobody, still so young. I don't know. If nobody else saw it. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Okay, I, if, I, if, don't I, get hung I, up on. This is not a hill I'm going to die on. Well, no. Okay? And, and, and look, I'm not trying. Okay. Let me, let me put it to you this way. Maybe the reason I didn't see it right away is because she was being, being her, that she's a minor. And they made such a big deal about her being a minor in the movie. Right. It just didn't cross my fucking mind. The closest that did was when she first started talking to podcast. When did you they start kissing? Having, when did you start kissing girls? I don't know. 14, 15. Thank you. I'm not saying you guys are wrong, but at the same time, <laughs> yeah, it you didn't, are. <laughs> I'm also saying that there is that aspect that like we just put up here with dearest though. And this is my point or not this one. The other one, he said, where is it at here? I just had it here where he says like, that's what the gay brigade do. Like they instantly ship everybody. Who's just friends right here. Yeah. I just, I, I mean, I get it. I mean, if she was, I maybe mean, maybe shame on me, I guess. I don't fucking know. Yeah, I yeah, don't know. I guess I didn't go there. Mind. Maybe I'll change my mind. Maybe Price I just didn't go there because she's 15 years old and the ghost was 16 and she's a fucking ghost. And I mean, I get it that she turns into a ghost too for two minutes. But she, that's the why she turned into a ghost. I not mean, what, really. What other reason? Uh, what, what other reason would she want to be She a ghost? was talking about it the whole time. She just wanted to know what it was like. Mm, uh, experimenting. Experimenting well, you can look sure. at it that way, but set Tom off. <laughs> but she also has that fucking same conversation with Dan Aykroyd. Is she gonna fuck him too? Like that's he's what I'm too, saying. He's too like, old. He's too okay, old. that's but, not, uh, see, now that's going. That's but that's what? my point. That's, she has the exact same fucking conversation with him. She doesn't lean into him, Tom. They don't. Oh. They don't look at each other in a naughty oh, way, Tom. Jesus. They don't I didn't see them the looking eye. at each other in a naughty way. I guess. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I love it. Look, I love the fact that this is the discussion and not and because we all agree it's, it's, a, it's a good movie. People should go see it. It's but, a good movie. Yeah, it's it's above average, as you said, culture. But we're fighting about whether or not there's a weird energy there. And and I don't think Tom remembers back to being a young person. I like, do, but I was in the third a little, grade when I started kissing. Boys. There's a little difference, though, between Ooh. a movie like. Something like okay, like a movie like My Girl, where it leads up to her kissing him at that one point. Like, there she has that where she's talking about things like that, thinking about things like that throughout the entire film. Phoebe is somebody who's never even really seemingly interested in that aspect of humanity at all, right? Like her father or grandfather, like I was saying. Now, I get what you guys are coming from. If I see that sometimes too, when I'm like, and I got to kind of shake it off and go, like, you know, just because it's fucking, you know. 2023 or 24 i gotta remember not everything is gay you know like but i see that in old movies all the time now that's what i'm getting at so i don't know i, I Every, didn't go there i didn't all, see it hey, i'd hey, have to rewatch it with that in mind i guess and i don't I, want to unfortunately hey look here leslie headland everything's gay coded <gasps> at least the villains are anyway <laughs> Well, that, well, that's another thing. You really want them? You think they would be, really uh, no, I'm risk going to... gay with the one of the villains? Because she's not it exactly was, a good character. It was a joke. No, but that's a good point, though. Uh, Wait, anyway. Are we still talking about Ghostbusters? Yeah. Oh, okay. Would they <laughs> risk making a gay character uh, semi-evil? It doesn't, it doesn't maybe, matter. Maybe that's why they're the movie. Go see the movie. The are you movie talking about is... Melody? Yeah, the movie the movie's worth fifteen bucks a person. It really is. It, yeah, but it's a fun she, movie. If you like Ghostbusters, it's a, a fun movie. She has yeah. an arc of redemption in it. She redemption, she redeems in the redemption, right. the redemption I, I, yes. I, See, I and if it. you have to look at it that way, the only one who would be having any of those feelings would be Phoebe anyway, because Melody's whole goal is to get back to the, get to the other side and get back with her family. Right? No, but she has a conflict. That's what she tells the whatever that evil guy. She's like, "Does it have to be her?" I kind of because they're friends. Yeah. Because she kind of likes her. That's why, I like, not likes her. Like her. Like her Tom. Well, that's the thing is, you guys are doing now exactly that. They can't just be fucking friends. They can't just be friends. We're just fucking. They can't just be friends. We are no, they got a like fuck. A violin. They got a scissor. <laughs> Jesus Christ! No, we're not going that far. Don't say that. No, we're not. We're not. We're not going there. We're not going there. Although culture thought it, but I, uh, I, I don't know about it. 
Oh, I'm fuck no. Saying. This is a much better movie than Dune Nihilus <laughs> by a fucking long shot. That's woke as fuck. Yeah. People well, are totally denying. Yeah, this is for all those motherfuckers who are saying, oh, you're just seeing shit, Tom. When I'm like, you don't see it, that you have the North the younglings calling the Southern old people overtly re religious and following a very charismatic leader who's obviously not a real good leader. You don't see what they're doing there. Okay. <laughs> but yet I'm the one seeing shit now here. Or not seeing shit now. But all right. <laughs> Let's do some supers. Yeah, let's. <laughs> Speaking of protons, we got Pack and Protons here. Season twenty says I do like the plot better than part two. They explained a lot, the lore a bit more. Not as solid as part three. I do want to see where they go. Felt like they had so many characters in this one. This to see who stuck and who didn't. Yeah, well, that and I think you, the, the Price and Six brought it up more so that I think they introduced. Patton and Nananana Jami in case somebody passed away between now and the next one. To be honest with you. Because I wouldn't be surprised if Nananana Jami puts on an outfit in the next one. They didn't make him a Ghostbuster by the end of the movie, but he clearly is open for that. I'm sure. I don't think there's going to be another one. I feel like... I think you guys are right. Unless this has some weird legs we don't know about. Jason Webster says that uh, Ghostbusters 2016 is a crime against Western. It's a crime against culture, period. Mm. Even culture casino. Mm -hmm. yes. There you go. And he's over there just trying to show off working out. No, I, Embry, I, I started working if, out along with him. I'm glad he did. Yeah. Ask if he should get uh, Superman 3 and 4 on 4K. Yeah, sure. I thought. Sorry, I'm, I'm, right. I, was, I was just trying to get my muscles to exhaustion because I. Worked out earlier today, and I did. I didn't feel like I got all the way done. So, they're an upgrade over the Blu-ray, but that's for sure. Cry yeah, am sends in five. Finishing is important. Well, no, I just finishing is important. The, the problem is the six. I know about finishing. I know about finishing, but the problem is, is that I didn't <laughs> too so early. I I did everything, and I got through all my reps and everything, but I I, uh -huh. I hadn't exhausted myself. It didn't. So, do you go yeah. to a gym or do you work out at home? Home. Yeah. Oh, okay. I used to go to the gym. I used to get up at 4 a.m. about six days a week and go to the gym, yeah. play racquetball, lift, you know, the whole nine. I spent 90 minutes to an hour, uh, 90 minutes to three hours. So in two different sessions at the gym on four or five days a week. That's awesome. Yeah. And then COVID mm -hmm. happened and then I became a fat blob. Yeah. I gained 20 pounds when COVID yeah. hit my gym shut down. Nobody cares. What does crime have to say? Good question. For five dollars, crime for five dollars. Yeah. Go ahead, culture. <clears throat> crime tips for five dollars. The new set screamed to me. Theme park or video game? Put in some animatronics or screens where the prisons were. Well, there you go. Prisons? The ghost prisons? Mm. Yeah. What'd you guys think, think of the ghost prisms? The prisons? I, I kind of liked how they had to. Like I thought, I thought that was one of the better elements of the plot. Is that yeah, they have never really thought about how this, even though like the half life uh, power in the uh, proton packs has you know will last forever, they never really addressed how the 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 tr the actual trap system kind of worked or how the storage system exactly worked or how full it, it could actually bit. be. They and in this movie, it. they do a yeah. lot. And and it does and, and like kind of like what Proton was saying in his, packing Protons yeah. was saying in his yeah. like yeah the, the gear porn guys are gonna love this movie, dude. And the it. fact that you get all the explanation behind some of you the get science. a bunch of stuff and there's a bunch of stuff from the cartoon and the toys too. Yeah. Oh, okay. So let me just say this: you get so the one C. Yeah, and you get the marshmallow guys again. You get um, Slimer again. Uh, you get like Slimer. You get the lion again. The lion um, was cool. You get you get some stuff again that you know. It was you're great, excited about. great movie. Yeah. I think I gave it. What did I give it? Seven point five, seven point nine. Now, now that we've talked about it, but I was waiting for them to do some kind of message about. Well, how do the ghosts feel being in jail? You know, yeah, yeah me too. In cages. <laughs> I mean, that, I was waiting for too. that. Yeah, they I kind of broach that a little bit. Yeah. Really? So, so we got some bail reform for for ghosts. But they also <laughs> here's the other thing is they kind of showed you that. And here's the one thing I will I kind of did like about the movie is they kind of separated the idea that there's 
ghosts of people. And then there's ghosts that are kind of creative just out of events, right? Like that's where I think a lot of the ghosts in the facility were from. And that was the re- reference to those as opposed to actual ethereal ghosts or whatever you want to call them where they're human, right? Like obviously like the library ghost is somebody who's human. Slimer might be somebody, a, a ghost entity that was created by an event, right? Like there was the one, um, what the hell was the name of it? That little red thing. Uh, oh, that, I know who you're talking about. Uh, yeah, the, it's spot. That would, yeah, the little spot guy that would, uh, he could only possess living the things. Animal. No, animal objects. The yeah, possessor. see, and that's the possessor. The possessor. Thank you. That's what, it, yeah, I was trying to think of what he's called. <laughs> yeah. They say his name a hundred times in the movie. But like, uh, that's what I kind of like too, is it kind of separated this idea that there's these weird creature kind of ghosts that are kind of created from that kind of an element. And that's where like you have haunted items and you can pull the entity out of the haunted item or you have actual ghost ghosts, right? Like, so I think, I think that's kind of interesting how they kind of differentiated between the two because real ghosts can just, you know, become go to heaven or however you want to put it. The other ghosts are always just kind of stuck in eternal purgatory because there's attached to something right like whatever event it was or object it was so that i kind of liked that aspect of it a little bit because it kind of finally answered that question as to why you have ghosts like slimer and some of the other weird ones but then you have ones that actually look like humans still and stuff like that so and it does kind of give you an answer to the question of you know what happens to certain ghosts what happens to other ones well if they don't pass on and do what they're supposed to do they get locked in with the other ghosts too but the other ghosts are not ones that will pass on they're just kind of like entities or spirits that are just you know a presence of whatever evil that they were manifested from basically that makes sense no okay (laughs) it works for me yeah Yeah, i totally agree yeah you guys are lost aren't you (laughs) i'm good i know i know how egon and ray feel Nobody I was thinking studies. about Eleven Alpha's comment. Uh, he said, "So are there dog ghosts? They should have all no. been seven, right?" No, no, they're just cat ghosts. Because damn, yeah, yeah, because cats are all sus. <laughs> Dix is gonna get mad. Awesome, I love kitties. I know, you yeah, do. but they're sus. I love every I love animal kitties I too. Look, look, cats are half in, half out. So when they die, they half of them still aren't there somewhere else. Anything else we want to say about Ghostbusters? I can recommend it. I'm, I, I'm not I, sure if everybody I, will love it, but I gotta I gotta do another show in about forty minutes. Are yeah, we gonna, we're supposed to. Are we gonna do this dance next week for Kong and Godzilla? Yeah, yeah. You, you, I got my tickets. I got mine too. I don't have my ticket. You don't have to. Where I am, there's always like two people in the theater. At three o'clock. <laughs> Packing on protons. Oh, really, Clobby? Oh, where I am? Oh, yeah, it was five people. Six people. Oh, yeah, like case. On thir- well, it's a Thursday afternoon at three something in the afternoon down here in the you know as low down in the nation as you can get. So it's just not like yeah. all right. Down south, buddy. All right. Well, well, Andre is supposed to see this tomorrow morning. I know that. Thanks, Julio. Tell my boss. I I think she's a great host. I've been trying to get her to run my show. Julio and- does not like me. Oh. She, he does not realize that this is my fucking channel either. That's the problem. And I asked him earlier, why the fuck is he here? Because he doesn't like me. I, I will never. I will yeah, never. Fire you see him you bitching at me earlier? No. Hey, six. Will you tell everybody out there when the pigtail stream is so I can get that? The pigtail off stream is coming up in two weeks. Oh, okay. There you go. What's the pigtail stream? Culture is going to grace us on oh. screen for a live stream in pigtails. True story. Um, because he reached 15,000 subscribers. But now he is at how many? I don't know. Like 23, 20. 5. Yeah. So at uh, 25, it's a halter top stream. That is not true. Don't that is true. Her. It's a lie. <laughs> that is true. Uh, and I think uh, on this pigtail stream, uh, Culture Boss has uh, something to announce as well. Uh-oh. What? Correct? I What? Okay, yeah. so she might be doing a thing. So, yeah. Is that has she already? We can talk about that later. We'll talk um, about it later. Can I just ask, did you guys see the Borderlands trailer? Because I did not know that they were remaking Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, <laughs> it kind of yeah. looks like that, doesn't it? I think you were like working or away that working. day. We talked about yeah. that. Yeah, we talked about that like what a week ago or two weeks ago now. Two it weeks already ago. came out. 
Yeah, no, yeah, the trailer. it's been out for a little bit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah it does look very Guardians, doesn't it? And it, yeah. I look. The one thing they got right was Claptrap. Guardians but, of the Suicide Squad is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, I'm just saying. It is what it is. Jack Black's in it though. It's yeah, he's a voice. Yeah, he's just a voice. He's pretty cool though. I, I like him. him. Just because he's what? entertaining. All right. Where would you take him? Um, I don't know. <laughs> On a joyride. Oh. Anyway. That's what you meant. Gotcha. What do you got coming up, Price? Yeah, what do you got coming up, Price? You got a, a show later. Yeah, uh, 10 p.m. There's the Quantum Leap uh, revisited. Ooh. Watch classic Quantum Leap episodes. It's on my live channel, which is my second channel, Price of Reason Live. And uh, I guess I'll work on a review for Ghostbusters and maybe a few other things over the weekend. Yeah, so... Is Script going to be there? Script uh, hopefully will be there. I think he's supposed okay. to, but uh, hopefully he's home and he'll be there, yeah. Cool. What you got coming up, Glabby? Well, in a little under an hour now, I got the top of the hour. It's the clubhouse with uh, my wonderful first officer, Raquel, and the great chief engineer, Mark D. And our usually, uh, listen, we'll have our, we're going to uh, do our usual Blake 7 episode review. Then we're going to review the first Night Stalker film with Darren McGavin from 1962 uh, nice. and much other uh, geekness. So there's that. So. And thanks for having me, everybody. Now, tomorrow night, by the way, tomorrow night, and J Man, we're, we're, we're reviewing Frank Miller's masterpiece. Daredevil Born Again. And Saturday night. Oh, yeah. this That thing, yeah. Saturday night Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, four more scintillating episodes of Star Trek Voyager. <laughs> which I'm excited about. Culture, are you going to be doing a review for the Ghostbusters movie? I am, actually. Oh. Yeah, there's two oh. drinks. I right had there. no idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's actually, that's actually going to be edited by the great Grant Gregory, so it'll either come out tonight for those of you in the States or tomorrow morning for those of you that are in the States for everybody else. I don't know when it's coming out. So good luck. Uh, but uh, I'm very excited um, to, to do that review. And I'm very excited to talk about this film again uh, in about what? 40 minutes over on uh, comics divisions channel where you'll get Aww. even more diverse opinions about the weird energy and uh, between the, the, the ghost and the human. And uh, her girlfriend, I, uh, I'm just saying, uh, on that note, I'm very, I'm very excited for uh, uh, Beetlejuice. I'm very excited for, um, uh, oh, very excited is too strong. I'm sort of excited for Deadpool and Wolverine, but that's like going down. And uh, check out my gear at beachpunk.us, buy your own hat, shirts, what punk? sandals, yeah. all kinds of stuff. Beachpunk.us, there you go, yeah. Uh, Jason Webster sends in another five and says, just watch Beetlejuice Beetlejuice trailer. I can see why Mr. H likes it. Yeah, I want to see a, a more of a trailer, though. That, that was just a teaser. Uh, Julio Scissor sends in 25, says, I apologize. Well, I, you, I thought you said I was insufferable, man. Maybe it was somebody else, but I thought it was you. You know, people right. chat, podcasters, YouTubers are people, too. And they're going to they say are. things that you don't like, and they're going to do things that you don't like. But that's do. not the only part of their personality. Try to get to know them. I love all of you. I people. like turtles. That's true. Um, I like Twilight. Did you what? say you like Toilet? Twilight. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're better off sticking with Toilet. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm less of a douche than I seem. <laughs> Dude, what? Price, I, I have been in, I lo I've i loved Price's content forever. Ask ask him. I've been well, supporting the Price for. We've known each Price other for a long awesome, time, yeah. really, yeah. years. Yeah. For the, yeah. Actually. yeah. So. Like biblically, you've known each other? Yeah, no, sure. no, no. No, we're, no, not, we're no, not, not. We're not ghosts in that Ghostbusters yeah, yeah, movie. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, we're. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. Let's all like toilets, not tur or turtles, not toilets. Yeah. yeah. I like idea. turtles too. Well, turtles are cute. Oh. They, they are, have their colonians. helmets on their back. So, hey, Tom. What? I love you as a hetero life mate. I'll think about it again. I just don't know anymore. Tom, <laughs> what do you got coming up? Uh, I'm, I might drop into a TNT. 
Uh, Thursday night throwdown over on Comic. Otherwise, I have the morning show tomorrow. Andre, I believe, is going to be seeing Ghostbusters during the show. So those in the chat who don't like me, keep that in mind. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I don't uh, know if I'm uh, if I'm going to be there because tickets to the Phantom Menace. On May third. Oh, oh, you know what? Indominus. I don't think you'll have a hard time <laughs> getting them, but that's just me. I, I want to well, say I'll have a great show without me tomorrow. Well, I'm just what? saying. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I was one of the only people in the theater to go see the last time it came out in 3D. Hmm. I, so? I want to. <laughs> maybe it'll do a little better this time. I want to say thank you to somebody in the chat. I'll go see. I think not, George Lucas just fucked that up, though. But hey, that's just me. He's gonna. Yeah, die but he's someday. still at the end of the day. He's still fucking George Lucas. And who are you? He's gonna die someday. I'm and not ominous. fucking George Lucas, nor would I ever do that because that's kind of gross. <sighs> I didn't know culture was fucking George Lucas either. I'd fuck George Lucas. M. Nominus in the chat. Thank you. Ray isn't a translator. He needed an expert to interpret the dead language. He's not that's a trans. Fun. Yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, it was okay. I mean, it just felt like something Ray could have figured out on his own, or with Phoebe even, right? Like the two of right. them putting their heads together like him and Egon used to do. And you could even have a little moment like that because he is kind of the grandfather figure to her now. And I kind of liked that bit there too with that. And just, I liked Ray's character in general. I liked that he kind of was representative of the old, you know, old guard. Oh, my good. Oh my goodness! Now, the, the chat, the chat's on fire, dude. You guys are not paying enough the attention. Phantom Man oh, ass. Yeah. Attention. I've been snickering through. The Patton whole Egon would have done it. Yeah. Done what? Like to it to each other? Oh no! Oh, they they translated the translated. Like, trans, okay. Translated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, well, and I like that they had that Patton brought us more time in the library because as a book nerd, I love the library. Okay, but they still could have done something else, played it out differently, not had Patton there, and still gotten Ray in the library to relive right. the gig. Yeah. I mean, but I'm anyway. like Phoebe, but I'm old and I'm not a lesbian. Do Ray. <laughs> lesbian. <Egon. laughs> All right. So, Midnight Sedge After Dark will be back next Tuesday. Probably not as late as it was today. And probably without. Or me. probably just as late. Yeah. There's going to be Godzilla. It's going to be late. Yeah, it's yeah actually, it, might, I... it will be late. Actually, it will be late now. Thanks for reminding me, Price, because that movie's longer and it starts an hour later. Yeah. If I had and... known that Tom had no intention of this show starting on time, I would have gone to see Ghostbusters again. I initially well, did have intentions, but I didn't realize they were going to have a half hour of commercials and I was going to be in Final Destination whatever it is with the fucking you didn't movies. realize that they have trailers before movies huh i did but not like that, jot that down because that happens every fucking time i know but a half hour worth of fucking trailers okay. all right yeah amc the big ones do that so I went to, yeah they're I getting worse and worse i go to this mom and pop one that's a really nice place and they don't have very many trailers and we even walked in like five minutes late that's what i'm saying like yeah um i just want to say this until they have a Godzuki movie, I'm not, I'm not, I don't care. That's coming. Funny thing is, I don't even think you're thinking of Godzuki. I think you're thinking of the the one from the movies. Godzuki was that's, one of the yes. cartoons. Yeah, that's me, uh, me, me. Klobby, I think, had to correct me on that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's it called? Min Me or something like that. I forgot his name. Yeah, it's yeah. something like that. Uh, yeah, Matt, I know, I noticed they've gotten worse and worse and worse hey, and Matt. worse. Matt, you were supposed to reach out to me to deal with some technical stuff. Did you get a different tech yeah. advisor? My and I really don't need phone five phone. minutes with the owner of the fucking theater chain either. I'm getting sick and tired of that shit. I saw hey, Nicole Kidman. Oh, man. Does she eat in bugs? No. What? No. Oh, I remember that. Okay. That was bananas. B A N A N A S. <laughs> Min Manila, that was right. It was Manila, something like that. Like yeah, Manila or something like that. Yeah. Manila, Manila, Vanilla. Manila, vanilla. manila not not Manzilla. Blame it on Godzilla. It was yeah. Manila. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I love we gotta manila, go. Manila, yeah. We're gonna right, go. Guys. Take care. Hit the button. Love Bye, you. Hosers. Not you call a hoser. Yeah. yeah. 
I got molested in a little boy's room. 